All right. Um, welcome to uh, the barber shop, and welcome to Razor Pranor. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. But the first thing which I want to do when we start a pod is, and uh, many of you have been, have been on it, is in three to five minutes, we want everyone to forget that this is a conversation that's being recorded on camera. It should be just the seven of us, and that's it. Nobody else in the room. Um, to set some context, right? Um, and you all saw our new razors. You all saw our new razors getting launched. We have a full set of Sensi razors. I also was lucky enough to shave some of you with them uh, before before we started. But it's a gaping hole in our portfolio. It's something that we have worked very hard to fill. So that was one theme. The second theme was we had started a property called the Barber Shop a year back. Rohit was the first guest on it, and um, it grew far faster than we had imagined. It had captured the imagination of Younger India, people who are watching the podcast were there to learn entrepreneurship. They were aspirational. They wanted to know how to build their own company, how to raise money, etc., etc. If you see the comments, like the views, it's all young India, aspirational India. Ah, wanted to know how the founders got to apni bigada. Is that cool? Is that a podcast? Ah, man, everyone's doing it. Right? Everyone, but isn't it a good thing? It's a great thing. It's a great thing if uh, if everybody started to build their own distribution. It's great. Yeah, I, I like it. Yeah. So I think content is a great game, right? So a lot of people try to build out content and commerce individually, and then try to marry them. But I think if you we built out commerce, instantly built the built out content, and smartly named it Barber Shop Razor's Edge, and started seeing how it can start helping our brands. And now Razor Printer has become a uh, where we are actually throwing the gauntlet here. Okay, we're telling people that if you want to become an entrepreneur. Step one is to know how to sell. Selling is super critical. Everything else, fundraising, strategy, investors, hiring, culture, people, marketing, all that comes later. But a founder's fundamental first skill um, and license to the seat at the table is to learn how to sell. And we are using Razorpreneur as a modus to tell people that if you learn how to sell, that's half the battle won. So today's launch of the razor printer is actually bringing in people who have been experts at selling in their own fields right uh, and actually talking about the sales experience and what sales means to you um to give you a broader sense of what razor printer is you've seen the range you have sensi smart 3 which is our 99 rupee 3 blade razor you have sensi flow 4 which are four blader sensi flow 6 which are six blader right we're going into colleges they're going on youtube on instagram across the country and telling people that you remember that wolf of wall street game sell me this pen mm-hmm. they're actually flipping it and saying sell me this razor right and show me how you're going to do it and we have amazing prizes for people to do it for one month we're going to run razor printer i'm going to take a truck full of inventory and going into each of the colleges investing mm-hmm. in the e-sales getting kids to come and sell and i'm fairly confident that as a young brand we will also learn from our razor printers that how do you sell and you know what are some of the insights that are coming when you go into the market when you go to your customers when you go to your family members to your whatsapp groups to your cousins ki razor bechna hai to kaise beche we'll have the top 10 razor printers from india come in we are going to invest uh, in them when they start their own companies um we are going to bring them on the barber shop for a mega finale and we have prizes for the best college the most innovative sellers the most viral seller the most the person who sells the most and i'm actually very excited Critics because choice of for best seller so mere ko to ye hai ki mere ko pata hi nahi aaj ke date mein jab hum chalu kar rahe hain ki kya kya aane wala hai are such a fascinating category it's no one has really spoken about it we're a young brand out of india 7 years old we don't have we don't really have you know we have to use all the punches that we can kind of gather to play a role in the markets when it comes to sales there are a lot of strategies that sound smart but don't actually Kind of fructify in a way that you imagine them to be. Something even like Red Bull, like owning energy and then sending, going into colleges, and they were very smart throughout. Like I remember someone telling me that Red Bull had this campaign where outside bars at night they would crush Red Bull cans. Oh. The brand would crush Red Bull cans and just throw them around every bar. Show yeah, the money just to show how much people are actually buying Red Bull. It was not consumption, but it was just show and tell. And a lot of that because then they own people jumping off yeah, yeah, balloons. Yeah. Yeah, it's all based on outstanding what they did over the years. But is 
in Sorry. India or Red Bull's uh, college strategy was simple. They used to send these Red Bull girls. And yes, yeah. those. Red Bull yeah. girls would just go and you ask any boy on campus to hold a Red Bull and take a picture and if a girl asks you politely, you're not going to say no. <laughs> so I'll click like, personally click like 10 photos of Red Bull even though I used to not drink it at that point. But and they were like, they were well-seed college kids who yeah. would kind of get a great yeah. style. Yeah. And, Correct. Yeah. They'd... And it actually touched the aspiration of a 20-year-old. Right? Of course. Energy like and so on. Yeah. But what, like, uh, I'm going to comment to you, like, you, when we spoke before, you said that there are some fundamental selling principles that are common across whether you're selling a brand, whether you're selling a service, whether you're selling a company. It's a two minute elevator pitch, two hour uh, distributor meet, whatever it is. The fundamental principles of selling are unchanged. Are unchanged. What are those? Just shed some light. And then all of us have like a lot of experience on that, yeah. We'll take notes. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> yes. I'll tell you a story. And this story goes back away. It goes back to the early 90s. I guess all of you are somewhat familiar with a game called American Baseball. Yes. yes. So if you go back to the 60s and 70s, American Baseball was very much part of the ethos of suburban America. Father-son bonding. Yeah. That is where their lifetime relationships and they would go on. Then when you got into the 80s, obviously more and more things and activities started coming out for that kid. So they did want to really go with the old man and an out for four hours in a dusty stadium somewhere. So this game was collapsing. Studio attendances were coming down. There was a guy who came as a the general manager of the Atlanta Braves. And I remember he was speaking to us uh, at a conference in uh, PNG in Cincinnati. I forget his name. His name is unimportant. He completely turned around what he did in that stadium. And attendance took off. Family started coming back. Mm. And this spread everywhere. So obviously everyone, all of us, you know, soap sellers asked him, hey, what did you do? <laughs> he, he had one very simple response. I asked her what she wanted and I gave it to her. Okay. So, so the fundamental principle of selling is the moment you call it selling, you're coming from your point of view. Yeah. It's like when we were talking in the morning and you started telling me all these wonderful features of this lovely razor, aloe vera, and wait, and uh, I don't care. Yeah. Right? Because that's what it wanted to be. So, what you want to do is not sell. What you want to do is give someone something they want. And that starts with, which a lot of us don't understand, of oh, human nature causes us to start thinking of all the things that excite me about my offering. Correct. You see this in meetings, yeah, in something. You're trying to sell something to management. Yeah. You're giving a full spiel. <laughs> because you're trying to demonstrate everything you know. Yeah. As opposed to thinking, what does he want? You're in front of a big audience. Understand yeah. the audience, what do they want? Give it. Now you figure out how to make business sense out of that, that's your problem. So, so almost stop calling it selling. Yeah. The moment you are selling, you are pushing something. What you got to do is figure out what they want. Give it to her. But in some cases, create the want. Yeah. Absolutely. In fact, the, most of the breakthroughs come by someone figuring out what people want, but don't yet realize that they want. Yeah. Till you give it to them. And they're all breakthroughs. All true true breakthroughs come from that. Yeah, that's true. Like I didn't I didn't know I cared about dandruff until I started seeing the ad. <laughs> yeah, you think yeah. Really? I, I, didn't that. Know. I didn't know dandruff was a thing. No, no, right. really, that's not even true of toothpaste originally. We think toothpaste existed forever, of course, and Sudain was the first greatest marketing genius. <laughs> and People didn't care about bad breath before, right? Yeah. And it was the norm. And or they so, didn't talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. The research yeah. then says no, that no. if I, everybody I, stinks, I did yes, normal, that's normal, right? That's example so, of how needs develop. Uh, 25, 30 years ago, if you went and asked person, what do you want from a shampoo? Yeah. The number one need would be cleaning. Some people would say dandruff. Yeah. yeah. No one would say healthy, beautiful hair. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah. No one. Yeah. Today you go ask them. Yeah. yeah. They'll say, I want healthy, beautiful hair, I yeah. want soft, dry yeah, hair. Yeah, yeah. So these needs develop. And, and that's created. one of the problems with market research because, you know, most market research tries to focus on asking consumers what they want. Yeah. yeah. Whereas I think learning how to sense and observe and draw lessons from that tends to be very powerful because most times you ask the consumer, yeah. Kya chahiye, yeah. they will not fully articulate it. But yeah. if you see their lives, if you understand what role the product can play in making their lives better or more exciting or more fulfilling, that's when true innovation actually starts uh, starts happening. I mean, supposedly, urban legend or otherwise, Ford said, okay. if I asked the consumer, they would have said, I want a car. They would have said, I would want a faster carriage, exactly. right? Correct. Correct. So there is some of that. But since I work with entrepreneurs all the time, right. you could also take it to another extent and be so blindsided that you think what they want is really what you think they want. And right. there is a fine line there. Yes. You know, what do the consumer really want but doesn't know? Correct. Versus, you know, trying to shove something down just yeah, because right. you are yes. so full of that. Totally. Right? Stupid consumer, you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you yeah. what the yeah. But you know, most yeah. most needs tend to be somewhat latent, right? Yeah. Very rarely do you find needs are that obvious. So yeah. you have to be able to peel the onion, get a little bit deeper, truly understand, you know, how you create value. And that process itself will take some take some time. But right? It's very hard to do, right? Like because the fundamental question now, as an entrepreneur, the fundamental question that an investor asks is, how big is the market? Right. First question, ki market kitna bada hai? Now, market kitna bada means the full concept of creating the market is out the window. Correct. Because if the need is already solved, then it's mm. not something new that I'm doing. Now, you've got to bring it yeah. for one level further. It's not how big the market is. It is how big the idea is. Yeah. Yeah. If the idea is big, now it's then your job yeah. to execute it in a way that it becomes uh, financially big. Correct. But, but, example. but Shant, yeah. you know, there is this myth about what investors really want, yes. right? Now it's just a question how big the market. That doesn't necessarily mean $10 billion is the answer to why you would get that investment or check or whatever, right? As an entrepreneur, I think before I became an investor, somebody told me this, which I always stayed with me. He said, you know, we went after, there were an I.O. board, which was inside the computer and said, we went after owning 90% of a still large enough, but small market versus 1% of a large computer market. It's also how you position, yeah. right? So it's, if you treat that just as a question, entrepreneurs try too hard to answer how big is the market yeah. and then you lose the authenticity, mm -hmm. just sounds like yeah. fluff that you put together, yeah. nothing sells better, doesn't matter, employees, entrepreneurs, uh, somebody you're dating, doesn't matter, authenticity. You lose that, there is nothing there. Yeah. People can smell it, sense it, you yeah. know. Yeah. So this question, how big is the market, that some reason entrepreneurs seem to uh, feel overwhelmed about is the question I hate the most. Yeah. It's just one of the hundred questions. Yeah. It's not the determining factor to why you get that investment or but, not. No, but Mari, I tell you what, any bank or when you at a very senior level, the nuance of market sizing is understood by by investors. But if you look at associates, analysts, mm -hmm. bankers, first question is market kitna bada because they want to sell upward. Look, it's our firm, we right? train them. So don't underestimate, I mean, I know a lot of people have this also myth that investors are largely stupid. Maybe we are, who knows. But, <laughs> but I think a little bit of credit, yeah. okay? Don't ever underestimate the other party. That's what I would say, you know. Uh, I, I think it's just a question, Shantam, at least from my perspective, right? It's not the make or break decision making because people don't get it. Otherwise, why would we invest in a space company? We really don't know what the market size is. Yeah. But the power of the idea and yeah. the capability of the founder to continue to reinvent themselves first and foremost, right? Yeah. You weren't doing razors yeah. seven years back. Yeah, when we and the yeah, five years hence, maybe you'll be doing, you know, female uh, products. Already, yeah. Almost, already, yeah, yeah. Already, yeah. Uh, well, you haven't sold any to me yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, during the day, <laughs> they know the consumer. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I think it's a filter. So, it's a filter question more than yeah, anything yeah. else. I don't think it's as, as we said. It's not the main thing. It's not but even it's a filter. It's, yeah. test, it's a testing question. Correct. You know. Yeah. To see your thinking. Yeah. If you said, look, it's small now, but I'm going to capture that, and I'll continue to reinvent. Yeah. If 
one is really convinced about it that's still good enough you know i don't know the, the, the one I, thing which i'll say is that if you take the biggest company in the world right really really big companies uh or the modern east like the last 10 20 years all of them have created markets yeah right? bar none so for example they have been beaten every piece of real estate yeah in the world go leasing market go leasing or uh uh you know hotel opportunity whereas if you they imagine how many hotels are there the answer would have been much more finite yeah. right if you look at uh uber right so all these markets were created catering to a very basic human need yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day but not in the conventional tam sense yeah but to, it's a question of risk capital i i personally think the risk capital in the us for example is far more uh benevolent towards such ideas the risk capital in india is far more conservative on such ideas yeah get yeah. and hence the search for more definite determinate markets yeah right so it's a function of where you are what which phase you are in that like, for example the reason deep sizes happen that for india is because risk capital comes with a certain definition yeah the yeah. lps also have a certain expectation out of market right will it is it changing yes slowly now yeah. right so i i genuinely believe large outside companies are never going to be created within times yeah right the yeah. always will yeah. break times and completely redefine how markets are thought of like uber fulfilled the basic human need to ask the driver how much money he makes every month yeah right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I we didn't know we had that need and right. then Uber came along I realized that's what I truly really wanted yeah. Yeah. Now, it also depends on your starting point right look if you're a category creator there's a different way to understand what the potential of the idea could be is yeah. if you're a number 2 or a number 3 player then <laughs> the relevance of tam or market size becomes very important yeah. yeah and also the situation is very dynamic and so for example when both looked at the headphones market mm-hmm. at a 5000 rupee price point the market was a certain oh, yeah. amount mm-hmm. then all of a sudden you say if i can democratize and bring headphones at 2000 rupees all of a sudden that market explodes can be yeah, much yeah. much bigger yeah. I mean, and so a little bit depends again on what assumptions you are taking about you know consumer behavior consumer appetite to buy and that answer will keep on changing again over over time and it sorry just to uh, add to vivek said sorry uh, no, no, no. if if you look at uh, another favorite topic is uh, you know india is a market of 10 crore people to sell to yeah some number like 8 10 12 it depends on who you speak it and it almost seems like a gospel to trade yeah. to everybody spews it everybody be used right? right on 5 years back the number was 5 crore yeah. yes 5 years hence the number was 17 crore sorry right. but i i still say that the wrong number mm-hmm. for simple reason that it, if you look at india today right and i'm just confining to india india is digitally equalized yeah and so financially equal so the girl sitting in jilai or sambalpur is watching the same tanmay zareen in your show right as somebody sitting in gk right yeah. so they are already digitally equalized correct right. right what they don't have is purchasing power yeah and so as purchasing power rise the job of selling anything is going to be that much easier yeah because you know what they have been sold it well, already they have been waiting for money in their hands aspirations have been created right so it's a very different way. i'll give you another like live example from two days back i was with my daughter in the us she's playing golf and her favorite thing is when she finishes the game uh, her distress time is to go to alta or sephora for right? right every day exact routine ha huh. finish the game go take shower head to sephora alta right which is the beauty stores so she's 11 ha and they have brands which i've never heard of yeah adriana grande and yeah. all kinds right she knows of all wow she told me this is that influencer this is adriana grande she is a very famous person the perfect shit right uh, and this is this person this is by the way and you know what she is not just digitally equalized within india she is 11 she is digitally equalized globally, globally. Yeah. correct right yeah It is phenomenal. It's the first time she stepped into the store, but she knows all the brands. So the goal that you're saying is awareness over here, right? Awareness? Now the awareness yeah. is there. Second is availability, which again becomes easier. Yeah. Third is access, access, which is again, yeah. do you have the financial wherewithal to afford the yeah, product? The selling has right? changed dramatically. Yeah. I don't think selling is the same anymore, right? right? Yeah. I, 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 my, I, my first job was a medical representative, right? I sold it. We already like. We already sold. Yeah. Sold. yeah. that is that is considered the hardest job right because like if you want to be humble in life you start there right you know 
इतनी लाते पड़ती हैं कि मतलब अच्छा। <laughs> हमने कैसे किया भाई नहीं होता है अरे जस्ट वन पॉकेट मनी है बिकॉज़ क्या बेस था भाई इन इन दाई डेज दैट्स हाउ ऑल द बिग द लीवर्स द पीएड इट ऑल स्टार्टेड दैट दैट्स व्हेन यू स्टार्टेड 18 मंथ आई वाज स्ट्राइक्स आई वाज सीतापुर वैन गोइंग टू एवरी स्टोर आई वाज 21 या सेलिंग विग्स आई वाज 21 दैट इज द जॉब दैट्स हाउ यू स्टार्टेड 18 मंथ्स ऑफ द ट्रेडिंग गुड लाइफ स्किल टू लर्न but i genuinely believe people need to do the digital hard yards now today hmm. to understand what selling means i just, i think that concept of selling as we knew it will become very passe for every category i don't know i tell you an example 10 years ago if you wanted to buy a fan what would you do and he sell a uh, a crore and a half of fans a year i tell the ball yeah we sell a lot of you know have a lot of bats <laughs> uh, 75% of people who buy fans in india go through the discovery process digitally mm-hmm. amazon and all the places starting from be at google or, uh, today if you want to buy a fan mm-hmm. what do you do yeah. you go to the net and you type fan yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> and the first result is only fan <laughs> and this is not just b2c no. by the way yeah yeah i have the b2b no. so the entire discovery process now now what does that what you said how does it change the the selling task now my ability to actually communicate with these 300 400 million people has dramatically changed mm-hmm. I did not have any access to them at different points of their journey huh? to tell them this is the kind of fan you need if you have a room this size. Yeah, this is how the color can look in this. This is how yeah. the energy. You know, I didn't. I, you do not want to get that word of mouth. You're really not going to get that from a dubanda. Yeah. So that ability to now leverage that digital platform, which India is outstanding. I mean, India. Mm. There's no country in the world which has built a digital backbone from beginning yeah. to end. I change the whole way you want to approach it. This is so pro because sorry, uh, this is so pro because now I see messages in my email or inbox. There are a lot of young kids if they when they want to tell you, say, I want to work with you. Earlier it used to be you know long paragraph with a resume. <laughs> now a lot of the smart kids what they do is they just send you saying I'd love to work with you. Here's an Instagram page that like grew to twenty thousand followers. Wow. Yeah, boom, sure. drop. It's like. Dude, I now immediately know you get how to build distribution, yeah. right? And the page could be about anything. Yeah, page could be about golf. It could be about could be about just memes. Yeah, but if you can build some sort of distribution, that to me is a sure shot sign that you know how to build distribution and you know how to sell. The fact that you call an Instagram page distribution itself is fascinating to me. Yeah, yeah. It, is, it, is, it is. Because it, it's it is. not intuitive by the correct. Yeah. So I mean, just coming Chance back to the hard yards, hard yards uh, thing that Rohit talked that's about. Great, that's a great. That point. hard yards thing. The definition of hard yards changed. So Shantanu and I trained at the same company. Yeah. He did eighteen months of van sales. By the time. in the same company i came for that training it got compressed yeah. into 18 weeks okay which started with why don't you load the van first so you have to go to the place and load the van but after two days they say okay now you learned how to load the van now you go and clean the bottles in the shelf yeah and then you go to the next step which is you go with the van guy and see what he's doing then you collect cash the most difficult thing which i always felt that was to tally the cash at the end of the day correct but now there's no cash to tally correct right so everything is on paytm and upi and things like that but the modern version of that when 
try to I, yeah. the cash overnight in <laughs> the brind <laughs> modern <Yeah. laughs> So now when we train people new, we say, okay, here's an Amazon page. Why don't you optimize it and show me how you can increase the conversion and keep at it till you get to a certain number or here is a new product, launch it online and show me or do distribution or set up an Instagram. So the hard yard has changed, but the fundamentals of the hard yard remains the same, right? Yeah. Uh, what are the fundamentals? How do you sell? What is distribution? Uh, how, how do you get it? How do you get share of mind, share of shell? All these things are not going to change. Yeah. Uh, it's just the medium which keeps changing over time. But you know, Arjun, I think the implications are very profound, right? Because what all of you are saying is at the end of the day, the role of sales which used to be far more around demand generation yeah. is moving far more towards demand fulfillment now. Yeah. Yeah, right? Because generation of demand through discovery can happen through lots of different things. So what would make a salesperson very successful in the past, that's changing far more to ensure that products are actually available, mm -hmm. developing much more deeper relationships more on the ground. ground. Yeah, you know, so from hunting, it's actually becoming a little bit more farming, farming. Yeah. in many ways. It is. Yeah. It is. But the thing is, I mean, I, when I give an example, today, if a restaurant is born in India, 9.9 .9 or 10 chances, they will seek us out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right? It is just natural. It's nothing, yeah. is, it, is what we do. Right? Yeah. Now, that's the easiest part. The, the tough part becomes how right. do you sort of get them onboarded, how yeah. does the menu look like, uh, how do you write content, uh, how do you do discounting, or discovery. don't do it, or discovery. Right? Relationship management. That farming, customer cohort, CRM, which customers, cold start problems, that becomes like, this is all farming. It's not like selling because yeah. somebody had to go and yeah. really get them in a, uh, you know, very sort of, let's, you have five meetings and then you convert someone. Yeah. Right? So it's still, but I'll also come to, at least my theory on some things are eternal mm -hmm. still, but we can catch on that oh. conversation whenever it's relevant. Yeah. So you're saying like selling and building has, have actually become quite interwoven. I think so. Because Again, if I go back a uh, long time in the past, first of all, no one even used to use the word build. Now, if you see anyone's LinkedIn profile, they say building this, building yeah, yeah. that, building this company. But no one used to say that I'm yeah. building. Yeah. You're always selling. Yeah. And building was a different act which happened in R&D or by marketing somewhere or else and selling happened somewhere else. Yeah. But like if I see a modern company, like most of you are in the modern companies, but I, I get to see Shantanu and his company quite closely. There's almost no difference between selling and building Maybe. because everyone in the company is doing all of that all of the time together because they're just so interlinked yeah. and what is what we used to call selling is really just the last mile now yeah it's just the final as you said it's the final fulfillment but you know, it it sounds to fulfill, like, but yes exactly yeah. i mean we but the, to me with what you said some things are still eternal i think everything today is so much noise everyone can get digital everyone can build an insta page everyone right. can you know everyone literally right but the hard part is really how do you rise through the clutter. Let's assume distribution you can get, right? But people are so tuned out yeah. of this noise. The real hardcore problem which we're selling is art of communication. At the end of the day, medium doesn't matter. What is it that you're communicating? Why should it, why does it matter to you? Because people buy since they can sense what your passion, your purpose is. And second, why should it matter to them? Like you said, right? Mm. So those two have effective can you communicate? Doesn't change, you know? And I think that more and more brands think I can just go digital. Yeah. And everybody is going digital. In fact, um, Skittles, yeah. uh, you know, they did a Broadway show uh, and they got so much more and it's an old fashioned way of doing a Broadway show because everybody is digital, yeah. right? So how do you, in fact, the problem has amplified. How do you rise above the plateau? Right. That's such an yeah. important question. So the other day, someone came to me and I was going to ask you also. They came for this, one of the, this whole content creation has become a investment thesis. Yeah. The through content, I want to sell commerce, I want to do yeah. social commerce, this and that, right? And their first page, which I think I guess the TAM question was, there are now 8 crore content creators in India. And I said, there are 8 crore content creators in India. Yeah. And 
they were very confident that they, they are content creators and I said okay fine interesting but then that's that's true now everyone now the thing which I struggle with on content is that when you're creating content you're so a lot of bullshit data over there this is one of them yeah. I don't know <laughs> like, if anyone point gives point you such an accurate number then it's <laughs> it's <laughs> like but let's assume it's a lot 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 but the thing with content is consumers who are consuming digital content have very low purchase intent yeah. So to rise above the platter is hard because you can't sell. If you're yes. making content, yeah. you can't sell. Let me give you that. Let me give you a point of view on this um, because I double underline this point. Like, the posted a reliever. Effort, the focus, the learning, the creativity, the insight, the training which goes into the creation of the actual communication of content what has collapsed dramatically. Barrier to entry is super low. Okay. Yeah. Right? I remember, uh, I mean, leveraging my age, when I grew up in this field, I was not bothered about the media channel which would be for. Yeah. So my entire focus and effort and months or years would be spent on making that content which works. Then, some computer would yeah. figure out the right way to send this out. Yeah. Be it plays in cinemas mm. or something else on television or now on thing. Now, right. here's my theory on why that's happened. Mm. People love numbers. Mm. Okay. Right? Now, in the digital world, you can get numbers left, right, center, upside down. Oh. These numbers were never available in older types of media. You have reach frequency, thank you very much, right? Now you can slice it, you can dice it, you can figure out whether this guy is sleeping when you get to him or not. Yeah. The Current generation, and frankly, people like me also, get caught up in the PowerPoints made with these numbers. Mm -hmm. yeah. The first part, however, which is the actual content, requires judgment. Mm -hmm. It requires insight. It requires um, a management decision which takes some risk because there isn't a number which he, can, he, or, she, he or she can fall back on to yeah. justify the decision. And that balance, to my mind, is why you see lots of good stuff, right. but you see so much yeah. crap, it's not funny. Yeah. Right? What's your view on this? I wanted to actually ask you on this. Sorry, last, little... last yeah, slide, sure. then you go to this. So people come to me today and they come and say, talk of, look at this effectiveness calculation, mm -hmm. this ROI <laughs> calculation. Yes. And my answer back to them is always, the biggest ROI driver is if you can step change the quality of your communication, whatever vehicle that's carried on. Yeah. Right? And people come with this traditional story nowadays of, oh, but advertising takes time to work. Not at all. If you crack it, you can see it the next week. Or oh, is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> of oh, course. yeah. yeah. Is it a critical mass of distribution, access, scale that they require? If you're looking, if you're a mass scale brand, the key is there's a critical mass within your target group. So if your target group is two people, yeah. you better get to both of them. Yeah. If your target group is 200 crores, there's not much point getting to 10 million. Yeah. yeah. So of course, there's a critical mass within your target group. Understand? Yeah, there's, there's a... Uh, Sorry. There's a thought experiment I like. So, um, if you think about lyrics, mm -hmm. you will remember lyrics of more old songs than new songs. Yes. Is it broadly true? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. new picture of the four sentences you can hear. It's a problem. But, you take a short song to sing the full song. Or age factor with us. Amazing. Yeah. I think you reflect on age. Yeah, yeah. Now it's like that age. It's a big bag. 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 I've been good music since I left college. Yeah. Everyone says that. Jim Roshan Nota Bajaj. Right? There are ads that you remember. And people say they were better ads. I think that's wrong. Yeah. Right? Yes. It's just that those ads played Wednesday though and correct and Sunday though was everything yeah. right. There were eight and modes of distribution and saw, you hammered it enough. Yeah. Wednesday though and Sunday though and we're home. 
and there's nothing else you saw. So, yeah. You saw those ten ads, correct. right? Correct. And it just grew on you like a yeah, run, totally. Right? For you, and that there was there was ads just run for six months. Yeah, the same ad was run for six months. Now the same Ramayana and and Chitral ke pehle Chitral ke baad. Okay. So I genuinely think that that is true. That the great content was created. Great content took break. It's it's damn hard today. Damn. Right. It is damn damn hard. Mom. Now it takes a whole to print that ad in the same place for mm. generations, yeah. but it to still register as a yeah. have a style of its own. Mm-hmm. Think of like how many clutter breaking ads have you really seen in the last one year? It was too many. Huh. Right? Clutter was too it's much. It's just yeah. there's great content out there actually, man. Far superior to probably what the future previous generations ever made. Mm-hmm. That's my belief. Yeah. But it is just a different world where there fa- what 690 channels on television, uh, one lakh channels on YouTube. Okay. In start this, start, it is just incredibly hard. But so, yeah. so creativity, and and hence, uh, right, at least, just my last under in my at least people who manage social media and all, if they do not offend my sensibilities often, I don't think they're doing it. That's the bar, is it? That's the bar. Because frankly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am not the consumer. I don't even understand that generation as well. Correct. As they do, when for me to st- as management to start judgment on their content, right, is very presumptuous. But I want to actually right. talk to you about this a little bit in terms of content which breaks clutter. Mm. You started off in comedy, right? And you know, I remember your like I told you in the canvas laugh factory. I saw you in 2011 when I just joined McKinsey, like going to your show when you and Rohan. Mm. I think she opened for you or the other way around or something like that. From then to now, where you are. Actually, amongst the people who was breaking the clutter consistently through content, and you do very interesting stuff, by the way, from podcasts on NFTs to you know um, uh, entrepreneurial games to comedy to talking to people who play chess online. So you have figured out that there are niches, and I think there's a very scientific approach to getting to your consumers and selling to them uh, your brand and your message, which you do very successfully. But what? What is it that has changed in the digital equalized world that makes it? What a like? What's the hard yards in the digital world that you are that you are actually putting in now? Um, actually, this is I actually agree with a lot of what what he was saying. Um, you know, when AIB used to be a just a YouTube channel, we mm-hmm. used to output twice a month, like two videos a month. I used to call well, hours. This is in two th- between two thousand eleven to two thousand sixteen seventeen time. We used to put out two videos a month, and I used to call our writers snipers then, Haan, right? Hmm. Which is that two bar goli marna na, two no bar. One time, aisa marna hai ki Trishana lag jaye, or uspe at that point getting a million views was a lot. Wow. And then I remember around 2015, 16, I started spending a lot more time with the Abi social media team, oh. right? Because they were outpost, they were posting five times a day, right? So their feedback loop was a lot more. Yeah. And we grew our social media very, very quickly, right? There was a bunch of young. There were there were the social media team was younger. Than the video writing team, uh, they were taking more shots at the dart than the video writing team, which means their consumer insight was a lot sharper. Like what ended up happening was that the social media team would come and tell us, "Sing, kis cheese ke upper video banao," because वो दिन में पांच बार बात करते लोगों के साथ, उनको पता है कि क्या चल रहा है latest. मतलब क्या चल दो हफ्ते में ये है वाले, so we need something more evergreen because stuff is changing every week now. So I think feedback loop is really important. That's why I I really like it when people build their own distribution because building their own distribution means that's the digital hard year today, which is going out selling every single day, realizing if I do X, then Y is the response. If I do X, then Y is the response. When you do this fifty times over, is that's when you start understanding. Okay, this is what selling in the in the digital age means. In fact, I was telling someone the other day saying. I love working with brand teams where I write ads now. I love working with brand teams where somebody on the brand team has done some sort of an artistic skill in their life. कोई poet हो, कोई drummer हो या कुछ भी हो क्योंकि उनको पता है audience के सामने एक baba कैसे बुलवाना है. Correct. Right. So once you know it in one field, it becomes easier for you to judge what is good in another automatically. Right. You see musician or uh, comedian को साथ में बैठो एक एक wavelength पे रहते हैं क्योंकि दोनों को पता है कि audience से baba कैसे निकलवाना है. तो अगर आपको ऑडियंस से वाह वाह कैसे निकलना निकलवाना आता है यू आर ऑटोमेटिकली अ बेटर जज ऑफ एन आइडिया एज वेल राइट इट्स नॉट जस्ट अबाउट क्रिएटिंग द आइडिया इट्स आल्सो अबाउट जजिंग सेकंड थिंग व्हिच व्हिच यू सेड इज दिस रैप एबिलिटी व्हिच अ डिजिटल वर्ल्ड टू क्रिएट दिस रैपिड फीडबैक लूप टू लर्न विद लो रिस्क एंड कीप रिपीटिंग 
you know, because Correct. if I again convert that to the old world, it's different. But it is the way we used to talk to our guys who are going store to store, the salesman, mm. because he is Correct. the first person. Correct. Right. So when, so when you launch a product and you put it into the distribution channel, it takes three, four months before right. you can speak to a customer. Only one shot. The right? first, first guy you, within the first two days you're picking up the phone and speaking to the sales guy. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. He catches a big crack. Yeah, we'll do bam that, etc., etc. That was the old yeah. feedback. Correct. This is a pop. Is the new feedback? Yeah. Also, it's more yeah. direct. Correct. Because we were going through a middleman, which is okay. the feedback of the storekeeper. Yeah. Correct. Your guys are now going directly direct to consumer to yeah. the person who you're selling to. Yeah. Okay. And that rapid turn down, yeah. which is all these war yeah. rooms and like all that. So if you remember, yeah. whenever we launched a new product, mm. we would be sent on the first day to sell with the salesman. Yeah. And you would do 25 stores at least with the salesman. And the pitch that you started with in the morning, you would see the salesman modify, 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 modify. By the 25th store, he would be selling very easily and the pitch would change. So they would Correct. be exactly Correct. this digital version of it in the real world. Correct. Right. And then you would go back like as a assistant brand manager, you would go back and talk to the trade market and say, listen, I think we need to change the Modify pitch. the plot. plot and, right. and then the whole plot would go back out and it would change. And then you would go back maybe a week later, spend a day, see. So it was an iterative process even then, except that it was not so glamorized and sexified. I didn't have a social media team where right. you would have things coming up on but screen the, in front of you. Principle, the principle is, the is the same, but the technology now enables you to do that actually much better. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I need yeah. to recognize it as a huge. But the risk uh, of validation. that is, and I call it the curse of the MBA. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> which is typically you have a bunch of very left brained engineers. Old, I got an MBA. We are victims of that, right? But you have uh, uh, engineers, MBAs. <laughs> and right, everyone is awesome. focused far more on the science of selling, yeah. right? Yeah. But the art of selling, selling, you're focusing on hardware, but what about the software? Because effective selling is about relationship management. It's about winning both the heart and the mind of your customer. The art of The soul of selling, you know, which is big, right? That can get lost because we try and make it too formulaic, right? We focus far more on journey plans and uh, line selling and all those hardcore metrics. And the risk is then do you yeah. actually lose ultimately, can I, can you know, can I tell you the a funny, of selling. funny story of uh, yes. to reinforce it. And the gentleman will be stay a name. Right. Right. He was on, so he had joined the company recently and was on the sales training stand. And he was uh, so young and we had. Correct. With one old season, 30 year old frontline salesman. Huh. Every winter, we used to go to every chemist and sell a VIX of crop promotion. And the only attempt of the sales guy was to sell cases of cases of food. Huh. So, this young MBA goes there, right. looks at this shop, chemist shop, but it seems to have enough VIX of crop to last them for the next century. <laughs> Ask asks the retailer, how much normally do you sell a month? Retailer gives him some answer. Guy punch calculator and says, oh, give me back so much stock. <laughs> that old salesman <laughs> collapsed and died. Yeah. But so Shantanu, as a, as a uh, left-brained engineer, <laughs> that I... Sorry, buddy. Uh, so no, 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 it's a good thing because I hear part. that identity very they, proudly. They, correct. There's a many uh, bringer. No, no, <laughs> you know, Middle but brain, you need that left brain also. So and yeah. I really wear that identity proudly. If people ask me how I associate myself, I do still associate myself as an engineer. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, you know, for me, I tell you the turn off is when people start talking about marketing as it's that is the most important thing, right? Your product. And for me, in a pitch, if I don't hear from you, what really is your product? Yeah. And you don't have the deep, deep, deep passion and understanding of the detail of your product, all marketing is just fluff and waste, right? And I see so much, I won't name, even today, well-funded, millions of dollars, great marketing, but I'm not a consumer of that product and that shows over time, people right. don't want to consume our products. They may love your ads, they may love your marketing, they may love your creativity, the genius of that, but... I think there is enough that's not talked about on what exactly are you selling, yeah. right? And why? So much of this is all about content. But content really, I mean, doesn't matter as much as the authenticity, the genuineness of your product. And today more and more people 
think that just somehow, you know, marketing solves all problems and it solves no problem unless you really, really are at the fronting front edge. Of I agree. Product. In the sense, marketing cannot sell for average or a bad product. That I completely agree. But sometimes in a competitive environment where some product is good at some things, the other one is better at something else, targeting becomes important. And then tell you a compelling story because the consumer feels for your product beyond just the function. That is in my category. For example, if I look at shaving cream, there are 25 shaving creams out there. Some people will like some fragrance, some people will like more lather, some people will like, you know, the way it kind of sits on the brush, some different things will be like. But if, if I tell someone, hey, look at my charcoal shaving cream. By the way, it's gray in color. So when you wash your face, it feels like it's getting cleaner. The fragrance is 3%, which is much higher than the market. It's also priced in this much. So I'm now kind of telling, and it's this really cool new brand, which is made in India, and it's an Indian brand, it's a startup, and it's stop using all the stuff that you've been using for years, use mine. If I can tell that compelling story, even though my product may not have superiority above the others, which is a lot, it may be incremental, but when people are using my shaving cream, I want to make sure that they fall in love with it. I and my product. You're right, you, I mean, but like he yeah, earlier you mentioned, the right. breakthrough companies right. such as they are, don't forget, haven't just been marketing geniuses. They actually have been no, no, product no, no, geniuses. It's after the product. I mean, yeah. like, but, uh, and I 100% agree with you, right? It's got to be based in the product and you build on it. Otherwise, it's uh, flim flam. However, let me give you a current trend I am seeing, which I don't think is good. No. Okay. Product. People are tossing widgets <laughs> into their products, which really meet no meaningful consumer meat. And that is not a good thing. So, uh, LED lights, wonderful technology, outstanding in every way, the, the, the light quality, energy, everything. Okay. Is it really meaningful to me that my bulb can give 99,000 colors? <laughs> That's like just for publishing so, of the old, so, you know. So, you know, so people, uh, because of tech, Hardware technology is right now allowing yeah. uh, yes. so much widgeting yeah. on the forward. It's, I guess in the in the current uh, lexicon, it is uh, no one has found the killer app yeah. for all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So they're throwing things, and that is a negative part. But uh, the pro it has to start with the product. Mm -hmm. But on the product, which is a functional superiority or a deep distinctiveness, it needs to for a long lasting brand. To be graded, it needs to leverage up to some form of purpose or emotional need, etc. And these develop over time. Uh, Pampers, I think, which you also worked on, is a good story. Pampers started with a hardcore technology, uh -huh. which was better Blue absorption, cool. so keep yeah. babies dry. But over time, this first leveraged up to let your baby sleep all night. Therefore, your baby actually grows and develops better and becomes healthy. You know, so it, yeah. therefore you are uh, a great mother. So you leverage it up to it. No, it's not the product. Father, right? Now the father's <laughs> also in the This is... Uh, uh, so I yeah. told you I was yeah. old. <laughs> no, if you, just, just, just to complete yeah. the thought. One is this paradox of choice, right? It. So we just tend to give the consumer so much mm -hmm. choice. Sometimes the consumer also doesn't want the yeah. choice. Because they're bombarded with like 50,000 decisions to make a day. Mm -hmm. And you know, frankly, I don't care uh, after the first, at least for myself, mm -hmm. after the first six colors of my LED, right? I don't care about the colors. I, I don't even know the names of the colors. After, yeah. after yeah. I don't have names. Yeah. You know, I'm, sure that, I'm sure that like at home, my wife knows, at least if I know six, she knows 60. But even after 60, she doesn't know 900. Like men don't know food share. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. No idea. I have no idea. Is it a food? So, <laughs> so, so you have to draw the line somewhere. But w what is changing about selling and where marketing also becomes important? And some people see it as fluff. Some people don't. Is product is now becoming experience. So yes, you must have a great product or at minimum a parity product. But a parity product can be overcome with a superior experience combined with it. And when you take the full package, it's a superior offering yeah. to the consumer. So this extension of product into experience is a big trend, which. I think a lot of the new age companies are doing very, very well, especially in India, but also in US, Europe and all these places. Uh, 
where the long standing companies 30 40 50 years they tend to miss out on that and they really focus only I on mean, product superiority they, no you're right think of uh, digital payments in india be it google pay or phone pay or whatever you use what a wonderful experience yeah. huh yeah. i mean i i no longer have to stand out in front of the panwala think oh do i have change do i not have change yeah. it's just so the experience is just better if not the product works. Yeah. I think the yeah. product has to, has to work. Just to right. take, build on what Vani said, if I take a, because we've been t- discussing physical products, mm. but take a platform, mm. right, which doesn't have a physical product per se, but like we have a three sided platform. Yeah. We have consumers, restaurants, and delivery partners. Yeah. Yeah. It's, just, it's quite intriguing. Uh, and I always at least emphasize to my team saying the biggest sales hack mm. is a better product. Mm. Like, so, if my salesperson is sitting with the restaurant partner and dealing with objections, hmm. right, it's time wasted. So, kill it at the product level. Right. Take everything which is a distraction, kill it at the, with the product. Like, improve the recon, improve things that give self-service. Like, 90% of the things that person is selling today or doing things should not be happening in the first place. Oh, yeah. That's the biggest product will be hack that you can do for the salesperson, right? And I genuinely feel... Uh, that's a part often missed. So when you look at Salesforce transformation, like for example, in, in consulting years, we'll do a lot bunch of that stuff, mm-hmm. right? We'll always focus on input yeah. management, daily sales call, all those are important, super important, right? But the moment you have a so inferior product, you have very low productivity. Right. So I I resonate with that like I think like for the old fashioned, you know, this hard yards not to just throw yeah. the baby with the bathwater as they say it. You know, uh, my kids are obviously uh, at a different generation. But I put my daughter through two years of working in a cafe. Okay, because, wow. you know, you understand as a part-time, right? She still finished college. That was important. <laughs> but my point is the hard yards are important. Most founders think I just sit in a room, I can be an influencer and that's good enough. I think how do you really, and then you lose the actual human touch, Right. And which you got through the hard yards. And they were all intrinsics that you learned. And the intrinsics and soft skills are as equally important because, you know, be whatever that version is, going out to make the delivery or going out to sit into, you know, that particular, uh, uh, whatever problem solving. And in my case, you know, engineer, whatever, I would do one week of QA on our own product, right? right. Software product, right? So before release. And it was a question of, can I find any bugs and whatever yeah. that yeah, yeah, yeah. it is. But yeah. today, so much of that is lost because everybody eats this Kool-Aid or drinks this Kool-Aid that I need to be an influencer. I need to do personal brand marketing as a CEO and all of this. For Shantanu, that. like, yeah, but, you know, no. and some are good at it, like Shantanu is. Yeah. But to me, there is a time and a place for that. But it's not a replacement for you really, really yeah. being able to touch and feel your customer and being the, really understanding your product so, it's not so, either so, so well. Yeah, it's right. Right. Ultimately, and you're right, the root is two things. What the consumer is and what your product is in terms of delivering yeah. to the consumer. Yeah. Then you make sure that this yes. gets out in the most persuasive, yeah. most cost-effective, right time to the right person. Correct. But that's sort of how the, in fact, we used to do, and you're right, because a lot of this, I mean, ultimately, my definition of creativity is the ability to make unexpected connections. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. If you knew, if you know what it was before you get it, yeah. Then it's it's what you already know. Unexpected and the connection. only way you can make these unexpected connections is by putting yourself in environments where you observe, see, touch right. and feel things, which in your normal environment you don't come across. So I'll give you one example, uh, a story really. But food, I ordered some food. It came with a small raisin package. Okay. And uh, which is nice. And uh, we were meeting that company later. I asked the CEO, how much do you pay for raisins? Because I thought this was overpriced. Okay. He had no idea. So I said, yeah. can I talk to your head of procurement? What he should know. The CEO should know, in my opinion. Great marketing, great packaging, you know, great everything. 
And I asked the head of procurement, how much are you paying for KGO freezing? Any housewife, including me, that's another label that I'm happy to carry. I know how much raisins yeah. cost, right? Two guys, head of procurement, CEO, had no clue. But you're packaging this 25 grams at 60 rupees. I said, why do you think somebody is going to buy this? Right? Right. And I can't answer that. So to me, that's a problem. So marketing is great, yeah. right? But these are the hard yards, which sometimes get lost in all these podcasts and everything. Actually, so the, the, the one thing, I'll, yeah, <laughs> one thing which haven't, will never go out of fashion stage three in B2B kind of places mm-hmm. is relationships, right? Mm-hmm. And just understanding the other person. So sometimes if you go with a salesperson in the field and you are guilty that you haven't equipped the person with the best product or, or feature right. and yet you see wonderful results, you only know that it's, it's only to the other person. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And so, Quick, I was 21, first job, pharma sales, very diligent, two and a half month training at the MNC company in Delhi, Kalka Ji Mitha, South Bengal, Calcutta South, mein, there's a very flourishing pediatrician practice and we had some pediatric uh, products and I will go for two months and we had used on the film book, remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Dr. Saab, yeah, Dr. Saab, yeah. like, Dr. Saab, uh, and nothing is, he will not prescribe Anything. For one and a half months I tried, like practically everything. And I remember Arnold, that was my ASL. Arnold Mighty. What my, company was this? This is a Louis and Dyson. Ha. So he once uh, came with me and then he said, Ki, okay, next time don't carry this clipboard, just uh, ask the nurse, not some person care. Kill me. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So I went to, it was very, it was not natural for me to have this conversation. So I went to ask the nurse, see, the doctor said, what do you mean? I said, I eat a bank and I'm football crazy. So the next day, I asked him, where did he get the bank? He said, where did he get the bank? So just buy the bank. So the bank took the bank and took the bank. And when I talk about football, I said, I'll give you the bank. I said, I'll give you the bank. This is a very good sales call. So I, I, he expected it and he used to always like, Sit like this and, and we just go it and say, oh, done, okay. Right? And that day I put a pan, he said, Kasa bhai, so waan se. Pira ro sa vach, din ke sa gaya. Usse bula, tum ko kuch bata na ni aaj? The first conversation I had was in that form. And that was, that became, she, so after, fast forward a month, yeah. we used to be like 20 MRs sitting there. Right, and the typical outside of the same bar, okay. in the peak arts. He will call me out, say, Rohit, Aja. And he used to just only prescribe the brand. Wow. Right? All this changed because, Relation you know, yeah, there yeah. was an yeah. understanding of the person and what he wanted. Just, and I, I could, be so intuitive. Just imagine hearing 15 MRs back to bank in a robotic fashion. Versus somebody who's actually having a some conversation with you. I think that stuck to me. That incident has never gone mm. from my life. Mm. I mean, Shandaru said, no, understand the consumer and the part they want. That's yeah. also the the, yeah. the human, the human, human yeah. aspect of, yeah, you know. Yeah, he's busy, he doesn't have time, this is a pain, he feels he got to it. You break through that, though. Yeah. And, 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 and he becomes yeah. the field sales call technically. And, yeah. Because you get it. Nice cause anything. But, um, you know, the other part of empathy, I think it's, one is to obviously understand the customer. I think what I've also realized is the value of understanding the the grind that the sales executive on the ground goes okay. through. And I remember uh, many years ago, this was a very wake up call about 15 years ago. I was doing a sales visit with a woman uh, sales rep in Gwalior mm. in the middle of 46 mm. degree you know, heat. And when I landed up in the territory, they gave me a bottle of water, which I had. And I said, what about you? Why don't you have water? And she said, nay, it's okay. And I was wondering, it's not going to happen. The reason is, restaurants, they think. Yeah, no, no, we remember the PNG yeah. days. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So but, um, you, you they would spend the whole day yeah. in the field 
because you know at that time you couldn't just go into any random place to go right. to the bathroom and they yeah. would just not have any water or food because throughout the day we, we made it over time a standard in PAG that every distributor exactly. had, so, had to have appropriate women toilet facilities so, uh, it's fine that was Sonar Pool doctors used to sit from 10 to 1 and 5 to 8 and it was 40 kilometers of Calcutta right. so I had a contract with a Thaba so I said I'll eat we put on the fan I'll pay him 10 bucks extra and I used to sleep they have to right? they're from Two to five because there's nothing else to do. It was a it was, the town used to go to sleep, wow. right? And there was no way you could come back to Calcutta and go back again in the evening. At, right? But you know, listening to Rohit and talk about uh, sales uh, war stories, I mean, obviously, I think product first kind of a CEO yeah. being that and first time CEO and engineer turned yeah. CEO at that, right? So, <laughs> 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 right? I remember we had this big. A uh, client prospect in Dallas, I, and I was living in Silicon Valley at that time. Huh. So my sales team said we have set up a closing meeting, and they were very hesitant. Will you come? I'm like, oh, come, of course I'll come. And then they very hesitantly told me that uh, you know it's in a gentleman's club. Half I said no problem. No, I mean I'll come. We have to sell our product. I come. Now the teetotaler that I was then and now, right? I just assumed it's a country club, right? Yeah. So this can. Let's say the better. Gentleman is not gentleman at all. <laughs> what it's about. So there can also be comical situations. We did get the customer, you go with the flow. But, you know, so, but, uh, you know, as a woman selling in the field, yeah. it's a, it's a yeah, whole yeah. different, different you know, comical stories. But, uh, but, you know, what I always tell young girls that come to me is, uh, you can still be yourself. Yeah. You don't have to be somebody else. Did and you that have to young girl, one? young guy doesn't matter. A lot of times the problem is, right. you know, just like product and marketing have to be somewhere based on actual, right. even who you are when you're selling. You may be a loud person, you may be a very quiet person, yeah. but you have to first learn to be yourself. Yes. And that can help it's, you truly what you, overcome. what you said earlier in the morning about being genuine and authentic. authentic. Yeah. Mm. That works for everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you go meet a doctor and you were not genuine and authentic yeah. in this relationship building. Yeah. And you figured out you're there for some unauthentic reason. Yeah. The reaction what they say because people Actually, it's that. a very hard yeah. thing to do because yeah. one of the things I truly believe in companies, forget about sales. If if we got the right person, yeah. man or woman, yeah. and allowed them to be the same person as their who at home yeah. at work, we'd be fine. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right? Because it's so hard to change yeah, yeah. yourself at 9 a.m. And, and say, yeah. now I am and it's exhausting. It's exhausting. It's, exhausting. it's, it's tiring. Exhausting. And, and not only let them be themselves, the other great thing which I've noticed happen is uh, in organizations, you hire people because they have a certain skill and capability and you think that. And a panache. Right? And then you sit on their head, brainwash. Right? And don't let them do, yeah. and yeah. You don't give them the free. But if you release that, now that's not easy because it requires a two-way yeah. trust. Yeah. I trust you, that's why I'm letting you do that because I'm still accountable. But we don't let them flourish. You know, I've had people who said, my my biggest hassle is that my boss is asking me all these things and really he's questioning, mm. he's testing. Mm. What but you, testing. You, you know, this is leadership. I mean, yeah, I think in one of the very one, in, not in the present company, previous states, one young, very brilliant girl was very upset with a manager or leader. Mm. And uh, while I was conversation in my, I think I, I was at fault saying that, but I did say that I think coming a director, it's done away, right? Mm. Kya ho so, a director ho ga, ho ga. So, mm. can I, right? so the new generation just coming in, yeah. you say it's that. It's actually putting yeah. this. Wonderfully positive you know pressure. Title means yeah. yeah. nothing yeah, yeah. to me. Yeah. Mm. Title is okay that the company gave you. You have mm. to own yeah, that yeah, respect yeah, yeah, right. mm. as a leader. And I think while it may in that moment seem a little bit of pressure, mm. but it's wonderfully liberating. Yes. Because it really will separate out the leaders who yeah. can totally lead from people who want designations and think they're leaders because they I, have a designation. I lead can, with fear I versus can, lead with yeah. I know the times yeah. when. Uh, I took a risk with my management primarily because my subordinates put pressure on me. Mm. Yeah. 
right? I could not face my subordinates if I did not do that. Correct. Yeah. Right? And this is one of, I believe, the strengths of these younger people so that they have greater confidence, they have greater independence, they have less worries about Uska cabin, yes, I is, I Uska cabin, yes, I is, I is. That's a huge power to harness. And yeah. this made one thing, you know, the, it leads to humility. Yeah. yeah. And without humility, you can't grow. Right? Because ultimately, the power to accept feedback, to listen to people, uh, is so important for any successful salesperson as well, right? Yeah. Getting a few knocks, a few punches, getting difficult feedback in some ways allows true growth to happen. No. Because if you don't do it, then growth will never yeah. actually happen. And not taking it personally. Yeah. Exactly. It's, not a, it's not a personal yeah. attack with a lot of people. And yeah. I, I actually wanted to ask you one question before we go to the game. How do you remain authentic when you are out there so much and you're always the same. Like your consistency is actually quite, quite yeah. incredible. I, I mean, you like add, so there's two aspects to me. One is I make content publicly uh, across different mediums and then I write for clients, yeah. right? Uh, when it comes to writing for clients, um, I I actually kind of disagree that y y you like authenticity to some degree can be fake. Let yeah. me explain how. Uh. Uh, authentic to yourself comes naturally, which is if you are totally passionate about what you're selling, you'll automatically be authentic. But understanding the motivation of the buyer is super important. Like an example is, uh, I began my career writing scripts for television, right? And I used to write these scripts for award shows, mm. right? And I was a 21 year old selling mm. to movie stars who were in their late 30s or 40s and the buyers were production companies who've been around for the last three decades. Yeah. Uh, and I realized very quickly that their apprehension was, con male on the sara hi bol denge, and you know, TV pe hi nik bol sakte, etc, etc. So I realized very early on that that's their motivation is fear, ki ye dikkat ho jati. So uh, why I would be very passionate about selling, ki sir, ye job to baut bade ho ha. I would then immediately start going into meetings, or pehle toh hum mahal create karte hai, thik hai? Ki pehle toh mujhe trust karo ki mein funny ho. Toh hum script deshte nahi dhe. Hum pehle 5 minute, aaj news mein kya ho, yehi discuss karte. Teen comedian baith ke, aaj bas, Mahal funny brother, taki unko lucky ki achha ye funny hai. To trust thoda build. Yeah. Dusri baat ye thi ki we would uh, we would reject some of our jokes. We would know ki agar agar mujhe needle yahan tak push karna hai, ki yahan tak to jayega nahi. Par bhai yahan tak koshish karunga to yahan tak jayega. To yahan wale jokes batao, fir khud reject kar do, taki ye wale big jaye. You know we would know immediately that oh, their their motivation yeah. is they also want to do something new and new, fresh. Yeah. Yeah. So new and fresh also that. <laughs> so you automatically start rejecting stuff early on. So understanding motivation of the buyer is very important and getting on the same page as them. So what would happen when we would reject our own jokes is people would be like, oh, they also feel like they're custodians Sensible of the script. Yeah. Like, like us. Uh, like, like they're us. on our side. Sensible. They're, they're on our side. Right. We're all on the same team. Huh. Right? So being on that same team is Great. super important when you're yeah. when you're doing yeah. when you're when you're, when you're mm -hmm. trying to sell. And authenticity we like authenticity, that's this is what I mean by it can be fake, which is understanding the motivation. And asking yourself, do I buy this motivation? If I buy it, then you'll automatically be authentic. Yourself, yeah. mm -hmm. I know that most people who want to buy, they want to try something fresh. Mm -hmm. Or in a lot of brands cases, like they just want to justify the spends, mm -hmm. right? So you as a seller have to understand that they have yeah. to justify the spends. Mm -hmm. In some cases, they have to justify ki, you know, I'm going to buy this idea. I need to sell this internally because I work in a, in a hierarchy and a chain. So very early on, if you understand that, okay, this brand manager ko to bas justify karna hai, wo, 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 ki, this idea I have to buy. So, if you understand it first, then you don't waste time. You automatically realize that this is who I'm selling to, this is what they want. It's all very posturing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not posturing, it's just you understanding yeah, what they what want. They want. Yeah. And realizing, can I do this? So often time what I would say is, hey, listen, you want to do cookie cutter, cutter stuff. And in the bandwidth that I have, I realize that I'm doing a lot of cookie cutter, I don't want to do this. And then you reject it automatically. Because there's no point working with someone if your, if your motivations are conflict. Motivation, yeah. 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 value, match. then you opt out. Then you opt out. You're just like, yeah. my motivations are not aligning. You want to you wanna you do know, this for X reason. Actually, in wise. traditional B2B selling, proper B selling, machine tools, selling equipment, hmm. etc. This understanding of the consumer, the uh, the decision making process out there, yeah. you know, when you're buying a ten million dollar line or something, it's fully mapped out. Yeah. Correct. You know, this is the first person you meet. This is the role of the person there. This is what I have to provide. This is his influencer. Uh, this is the, you actually map that role out yeah. and you target each person's need in that map. Correct. So you exactly what you're saying, you do formally. In, in traditional heavy industry yeah. of B2B selling. 
One of the things But, that I say in a meeting, sorry, one you are. No, no. I just want to mention this angle. One of the things that I would say in the meeting is, "Ki dekho sir, aksar jo creative banda jo marketing sochta hai na, wo artist artist samajhta hai, right? Yeah. Ki main to kuch intami creative ho, main intami kuch aisa bol dunga jisse product to aisa big jayega. But actually, the best CMOs I've worked with, wo artist manager hota hai. So I, as a creative person, may actually artist manager doon ro. Kya kena hai, wo ab batao. कैसे कहना है उसके मैं मजे कर लूंगा आप बस बता दो कि क्या कहना है क्योंकि एट द एंड ऑफ द डे इट्स योर जॉब इट्स योर प्रोडक्ट यू आर स्पेंडिंग द मनी यू नीड टू यू नो यू हैव अ राइट ओवर व्हाट द क्रिएटिव इज ट्रू सो माय जॉय इज इन कैसे कहना है करेक्ट मैं उसमें अपना ट्रिप लेता हूं क्या कहना है आप प्लीज डिसाइड सेट कर लो सो मोस्ट मार्केटिंग पीपल आर जस्ट आर्टिस्ट्स हु आर लुकिंग फॉर द राइट आर्टिस्ट मैनेजर एक्चुअली द राइट आर्टिस्ट मैनेजर कैन चेंज एवरीथिंग आई यूज्ड टू बी अ कॉमेडियन आई शुड लव परफॉर्मिंग ऑन स्टेज एंड द बेस्ट आर्टिस्ट मैनेजर आई एवर मेट सर द सेम थिंग कैन हैपन ऑन YouTube स्किल वही है मजा वही है बस मीडियम मीडियम चेंज करना है सो आई लव वर्किंग विद सीएमओज हो हु आर जस्ट लेट मी जस्ट चैनल द क्रिएटिविटी इन द राइट प्लेस विद द राइट मैसेजिंग एंड लेट देम डू देयर थिंग शांतनु आई वांट टू मेंशन वन थिंग व्हेन यू नो रोहित वाज टॉकिंग अबाउट फार्मेसी हेल्थ केयर एंड तन्मय विद व्हाट डज द कस्टमर वांट यू नो मार्केटिंग हैज अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ कलर ऑफ बीइंग अ लिटिल फ्रिवलस ओके बट इट डजंट हैव टू बी एंड आई वांट टू गिव एन एग्जांपल अह Uh, three years ago, my mother got diagnosed with cancer, right? And I went to three of the best hospitals in Bangalore because that's where I live. And ultimately, the hospital I chose, I realized, and I knew nothing about cancer, but then I learned a lot. The doctor more or less is capable because these are three of the best, and the therapy they're going to offer is more or less the same. The drugs are the same. The cost. Little bit here and there, it's expensive, so little more, little less doesn't matter. But ultimately, where we went to were the only ones who pitched. In and out, we will make sure every week, because remember this has to be every week, every two and a half hours, right? And when I went to that and the other hospitals, I know the founders. I know they said, "Why did you go there and not here?" I said, "Here, yeah, because your hospital takes eight hours for the same therapy because your billing is." This or that or that or that, right? Your ops is yeah. just overhead, and you never understood that. For me, the priority of spending less time is the value proposition. Yeah, right. right? It is a healthcare service, but it is really operational excellence that I want because the drug is the same, the doctor essentially is the same. same. But each of the other hospitals were touting their doctors. This was the only one that understood. To Tanmay's point, yep. yeah, I want to be in and out. Yeah. I want to be in and yeah, out, out, right? Yep. So even in a very serious product, correct, knowing what yeah, does yeah. the customer really so want, true motivation, yeah. true motivation, true motivation, and that then you know what Tanmay said. Let me give you an example of how all these things come together: the marketing, the product, and the creativity. We've all heard of Fendi. That why I know where it is now. But one point in time, largest. I use it every day. Largest app. <laughs> <laughs> it shows. It shows. Yeah, of course. Lovely hair. I can't tell you how this how this became the largest app. The NG bought a small French vitamin oil company, huh? which I had know. a vitamin oil called Fendi. Mm, That's where the it's brand. It's a molecule name. Yeah. No, the brand right. name okay. of this thing was Fendi. Okay. 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 Separately, PNG had some years earlier discovered a product technology which was combining a shampoo and conditioner, mm. and they tried it for three, four years in various ways. Didn't really succeed. They took the Pantene brand name, put it on this. Wasn't good enough. One marketing team in Korea came up with the idea of. Healthy, beautiful hair. The concept. Another creative team, and this all happened. This all happened over a space of three, four years. Okay, not the cut, but the tools. Another team, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was in Australia or somewhere. Purely creative, never scripted, never boarded. When they were making a commercial, came up with what became the famous peacock shot. Which mm-hmm. you may have seen in bank deep commercials yeah, that yeah. are going now, which was completely great. Peacock shine. Yeah, yeah <laughs> we got it. The peacock shot internally, right? I love it. But these four things were then put Pinfoil. together. Mm-hmm. Literally sales. within three four years, it became the world's largest shampoo. Mm-hmm. Wow! So it was a combination of all of it coming 
at together the one no one thing could have done it mm-hmm. there was clearly unexpected connections which happened so then of course good execution and etc 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 hunting peacocks no that <laughs> 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 yeah, it was called the peacock yes this is the it was this is the hair coming out of the water thing no 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 no, no, no. no. just the drop yes, literally the drop the hair bounces oh, yeah. 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 right yeah. It seems so. It seems now. It seems so natural. Nice yeah. No, no, no. Someone the came the up with great it. creative ideas. Mm. When they happen, they say, "Wow, oh, of course." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Power of also. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. yeah. It just. Yeah, pretty really the main. It's like your razor demo, which we will talk about yeah. at some point. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Looking forward to that. One. Awesome. Yeah. So now changing changing cues to our personal sales journeys. I have some cue cards here, mm. and in front of you, you have a I have never, and a, I have. Prompt. Okay, all of you will have this. Just mm. pick it up, and we have few questions. You won't have a lot of them, but uh, mm. I'm going to put honesty is expected. Okay, yes. So never have I ever cried after a client meeting. Never have I ever. I have. Wow. Okay. So Vani and Rohit, I want to know. Clients have cried after meeting. What was he looking at? My right. <laughs> but but, yeah. but Rohit Mani, I would not actually want to go go on work in in no particular order. But, uh, so crying, I use metaphorically, like uh, it's highly I emotional. Use it emotional. Oh, okay, <laughs> right? okay, okay, okay. Um, uh, I think since McKinsey days, I, and you know, there was a, a a client who was really under pressure. I I, th- I thought he was doing exceptionally well for the company, but it was in the poor books of the management, right? For some reason, and. For reasons which are internal to that company, and and in a meeting, I remember the team worked with him for about ten fifteen days, uh, and the, one of the objectives, side objectives, was to make him shine. And he presented the idea got through. He came out and said that I've been working in Zomato fifteen years, like yeah. mm. never have I felt this good, like right? mm. as I did today because you guys believed in me and invested, you know, the last fifteen days in making me. Uh, look good. I've been trying this for years, and um, and I think that those are moments where you you sort of in the background. Yeah. It's wonderful to be in the background. Yeah, this is crying in a good sense. I, I, crying in good sense. I crying in a bad sense. So though, so you know McKinsey meetings, right? Yeah. So McKinsey meetings are uh, if it, it, you come out and you say. It's a, the only great meeting is when your partner takes you to uh, drinks yeah. in the evening. A gentleman's club. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least I, I have no such experience. I worked mostly in India. Dallas. Uh, the, uh, the, the second interesting meeting is where, like, good. Uh, the good meetings are where make the things are okay. An interesting meeting is exactly. just bach ke baad hai. Right. So those meetings are always there where you escaped. What so about you, Vani? Uh, Little crying? No, I cried. All the time. But so you know, my first twenty fundraising pitches as an entrepreneur, go in the bathroom and cry. Yeah. You know, first ten board meetings. You know, after so much preparation, go in the bathroom and cry. And you know, it's fine if you feel like crying, cry. But you know, client meetings. I'll tell you, today I'm accused a lot by a lot of people that I'm so much into detail and that's not important. It's, you know perfection micromanaging whatever whatever but i do not apologize for it because i've scars that have made me the way i am okay so i remember i was in enterprise uh, software for a uh, first part of my life and uh, we were selling to ups right and we were the finalists and we were just getting to the final proposal site so i get a uh, message back mm-hmm. from the cfo Sorry, we have withdrawn, and we will not buy your product. Right? This is six months of intense sales. That's support. crazy. Okay. So I said, "Can I get five minutes with you?" And we deserve to lose that sale, and that's why I cried for the stupidity of losing that sale. We had sent our final proposal to them in a FedEx package. Wow! But UPS to UPS. So he said, "If you are not willing to know who your client is, wow, you don't deserve us." And I agree with that. Yeah. Right now, I could say I was the CEO. This was a problem in the mail house. It was a problem with the sales guy. No, it's a problem that has to be owned at the top because if oh. you didn't create that level of detail, it's my problem. That's how I see it. So 
I get into details and I don't apologize for it. I don't care who gets upset, mad, it's cool, not cool, doesn't matter. Yeah. Then a small second story, we did win Pepsi yeah. in the same company and they were coming to uh, our first kickoff, right? Get into a lot of detail, uh, you know, including what's the food, what's the wine, how are we bearing everything. Right? Now I get into everything at home, at work, whatever. So they call us at four o'clock for a meeting at 6.30 that they've cancelled it. Okay. They've bought our product. And uh, again, because your relationship call back and be humble and ask why. Honest to God, I didn't know that a same restaurant can only serve either Pepsi or Coke, no, yeah. but not both. I didn't yeah. know that at that time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because, like I told you, I'm a left-brained engineer. What do I know about marketing and sales and all of right. this? But somebody should know. Obviously, they, the MBAs, the sales guys apparently didn't know. So I went to that restaurant, met the manager and said, what can we do today to serve Pepsi versus Coke? He said, we have a contract, we can't do that. I said, there must be a way, right? So he said, if you take over the restaurant and get a license, whatever, you can sell whatever. She says, and it's a private part. Yeah. Yeah. We are not responsible for it, right? Between 4 and 6.30, we solved that. And I picked up the phone and said, you know, I heard you weren't coming because this restaurant, you, your team verified, serves Coke, but of course not, you know, we are going to serve Pepsi. And we took care of it, right? <laughs> And Amazing. we wanted to take you to this restaurant. Um, so, details, right? Yeah. You have to get into the details as a leader. Yeah. And when you were talking, that's sort of the story that came to mind. Yeah, with my food, I'm not talking to But I think while you would say yeah, credible, I'm, then I'm, that I'm story is, is <laughs> along with the problem, the solution orientation yeah, also, yeah. right? Yeah. You actually said, many people shy from a problem, but you took it upon yourself saying, come hell what may, I'm going to try and find a way to solve the, yeah. the customer's problem, which I think is very powerful mm -hmm. in that story also. And I think shame on us, right? How come I didn't know when we are selling to that customer, we are selling software, yeah. right? We are selling the security software. Why oh, the hell do the I need to know about the product? <laughs> in the right? restaurant. Yeah. In the restaurant. But that is where we make a mistake. It doesn't matter what I'm selling. Yeah. I need to know my customer. This yes. is the biggest lesson that I have learned. So I may be an engineer, I may be selling. By the way, these were million dollar products, right? That we were selling, enterprise software. But doesn't matter. High involvement. <laughs> huh? High involvement. High involvement. Yeah, yeah. But I never understood that high involvement requires you to know beyond your product. Very yeah. true. To the dynamics of that customer. And across the board, so, and yeah. I am Lakhma, and I was the coordinator of the fest. Mahindra used to always be the sponsor for I am Lakhma's fest because they were good recruiters and so on. Mm. And we had a taxi vendor for bringing in leaders, CEOs, etc. From, from sponsors who would come to I am Lakhma. Yeah. And you used to promise Tunde Kebab visits. Ha, all of that, ah, right? So right. now for the Mahindra folks, we always had to say, at that time, there used to be a scar called Bolero. Ha, ha, yeah, 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 budget. Of yeah. course. And we used to feel that Bolero, they were like, they nothing. No, no, none of these Toyota, none of these guys can go. Mm. For these three people, it has to be a Bolero. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you're right. That's, that's the, and and this is something that uh, they would remember, right? So, Correct. I think there's a sales lesson in it, but there's a greater life lesson, which is the obstacle is always the way. Yeah. Correct. So, the that's obstacle so that you face a lot of times ends up being the thing which is like what you talked about, unexpected delight. Like, yeah. Or like, that you could change this moment. in the restaurant. Yeah. What is so, it? Power? Power of peak moments. Yeah. Peak moments. Correct. With a book, yeah. uh, which has got some fascinating details around this. Wow. But I, I love the way MBAs are bashed up today, right? Let's go. Maar parti ke left brain nahi, kabi maar parti ke right brain nahi. Sorry, sorry. Next question. Next question. Next question. Okay. Never have I ever dated or married a customer slash client. And. <laughs> Shantin, why don't you put yours up on no, this? Marriage is not a good thing. It's 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 not a good thing. It
there are very high number of uh, PNG people who marry PNG people, but they're kind of the same age, yeah. same background. Mm. They're, they're, thrown, they're thrown together. So, it's mm. a, I guess in my case, it did not happen, mm. but uh, many, it's very, well, very common. Well, once a client uh, called me home and uh, mm. later I figured it was like a pitch for marriage and then I had to escape. Say, I have to marry well, the kid. To the daughter. <laughs> Wow, wow. that's very done. common. <laughs> the number of McKinsey consultants who married clients' daughters is is actually <laughs> extraordinary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Client married. sons, hello. I go. Client sons are not actually seen. Not ah. seen. The core motivation of the concept is very far. Client daughter. But, but, but I tell you something. Well, the call calling up to the race is very interesting. But Shantanu, I tell you one question that I find surprising, but I get asked a lot: is you work with your husband? I'm like, never, 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 never. You know, and I don't know why I get asked this question as if I can't on your work own. without my husband. I don't understand this at all, right? But for me, I've always been very clear. My home and my professional life need to be very separate. In my case, right? I don't want to go home and talk about all the problems of work and just only have that to talk about and nothing else. And I was also always very clear that in an intense job that it is. If I have to take the same intensity home and we both have to make that work, we will not be able to be married. That's it. At least my personal I life and situation. You. I agree with you. you went to that yes. and, What and is then, it? It's some... huh? No, I don't need to vent. Yeah, I, have, yeah. I don't want to vent at home. Yeah. You know, I want to be joyful at home. Right. I want home to be a sanctuary. I don't want a therapist take at home. Work. Right? I want somebody who makes me laugh. Mm. Right? So, I mean, at least regardless. But... Men don't get asked this question, but women are always automatically asked, well, intentionally. You're right. Not that, you know, you work with your husband. That's a given. That's an assumption. So, I want to break that right. Right. Interesting. No, no, you're right. It, it is one of the uh, not so pleasant things of our society. Women can ask this. In fact, most There's women under, founders, yeah. if they're co-founders of a successful company, the number of times I hear, oh, it's because of her husband. Correct. There's you an know, underlying it has nothing assumption. nothing to do with but There's an underlying assumption. assumption that everything was derived from the identity yeah, yeah. of the spouse, right? So, it's an, it's what do you think has changed? Change is slow. Like stories like Micah, for example, where the husband also is like very, you know, proficient and so on. But, but they didn't spouse. work together, no? That's a very different thing. Uh, they didn't work together. Right. They didn't work together. But it is a... It's a common, like, it's a common perception, I would they're, imagine. They're, they're, Not they're a pleasant perception. Several husband-wife companies now as founders, co-founders, they incredibly successful. Yeah. Yep. We have seven I mean, common friends. Our business, uh, our uh, business. No, no, no I, I, I didn't say that. My, sugar, sugar, my wife runs her own business. And uh, I have nothing to do with it at all. Consciously, I stay away from it completely. But sometimes when she is meeting, for example, a landlord where she's renting a space. Or some mm. supplier. Mm. Right? There comes to be a sort of implicit, unpleasant assumption in that discussion. If I have come there purely as a driver to drop her there. Wow. That uh, I will be the right person to talk to about yeah. this. That exists. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Now coming to Reza Prana. Yes. Which is why Reza, right? And the whole concept of understanding what the consumer wants, telling them in a way that is, you know, that, that feeds into something which creates unexpected delight, unexpected returns, everything that is spoken about at an individual level. All of us are now Razorpreneurs and we are launching Razorpreneur, okay, which is basically, um, we're going to get from college kids to homemakers, to army veterans, to, you know, people in jobs, to potential entrepreneurs, everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. But no one, everyone thinks it's about the big, you know, the, the big idea, the lights, the big idea, the big vision and the money and all of that. But it's actually about selling. What we're going to do is we're actually launching Razorpreneur, getting mm. people all around the country. It's about selling, you said. Selling, yes. They have, they have to sell the razor. Yes, they have to sell the Sensi Smart. Can, can you demonstrate by selling us the razor first? Yes. Okay, can you try? Yeah. That's a good idea. I think this is the... Judge karne se pehle, pehle Every center of the tsunami, right? Okay. Um, okay. So I'm going to actually stand for my sales pitch. And... Uh, you need an applause or anything? No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> and I'm actually going to use all the sales principles and all the learnings from the last couple of hours. Hopefully to be able to sell Bombay Shaving Company's Sensei range to the six of you. 
um, and hopefully then all the razor runners who are watching this will take that as a starting point and go and sell uh, in the you know in their markets and their communities and their ecosystems and universes and hopefully when razor runner ends on 30th of september the company also learns a lot more about what the market looks like so uh, this is what i call the epicenter or the starting point of the tsunami hopefully it kind of becomes a big one okay so introducing to you sensi range by bombay shaving company um it is uh, just to give you a context of the category and you both know it very well but for for the for the rest razors is the center of the grooming world for men okay shaving is been the core of grooming it's everything from face washes to deodorants to fragrances to face wash to hair to everything comes after shaving shaving is core but today consumers are far more evolved consumers are more digitally savvy the first product that a consumer used to buy 15 years back used to be a razor as a 16 year old and i think all of us here would have bought you know our first razor at 16 17 18 or been gifted the gifted would have for ourselves and you know kind of figure out that mustache and so on but today the first product at least in urban india being bought is actually a trimmer by a 14 year old to get the hair right so the consumer is changing significantly we wanted to always participate meaningfully in the center of it's like if you're a cricketer and not playing at lords then even if you're scoring centuries in one k day and mcg and so on you still want to play at lords I take deep objection to, to the Eden Gardens. Yeah, Eden Gardens. Eden Gardens. Eden Gardens. What are you talking about? This yes. is our Eden Gardens participation. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So that's better. Yeah. And uh, by you know, Bombay Shaving Cup. By Bombay. So you know, see, see. Yeah. By Bombay. Yeah. 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 If you are seventeen, eighteen, sparse hair on your face. You know the first mustache is coming out. Acne, younger skin, thinner skin. You're also probably dating for the first time, crushing on someone for the first time. Super important how you look. Your Instagram is important. Your Bumble and Tinder feeds are probably getting created. So how do you elevate yourself from a barber or from a disposable razor which you're using or never used one to a great product? So introducing Sensi Smart Three. Okay. Sensi Smart Three has a pivot head. It is a product that also has a lubricating strip, which has aloe vera gel, Moroccan argan oil, and vitamin E. So these are things that you you see as a in most razor rides, right? But the design of the razor is such that the process of shaving becomes enjoyable. One of the most important things that happen when younger people shave is that hair is longer. When your hair is longer, it gets stuck a lot more. So when you shave, you try to take out the hair with your hands, like with the fingers, like this, or across the face of the razor. And you end up cutting yourself, and the experience becomes frictional. But because the back of the razor is extremely exposed, under a flow of water which may even be thinner or smaller, the razor anti-clogs very quickly. So this razor will give you a very good shave in one or two minutes, and take care of your skin because it's sensitive on the skin. Sensi Spark Three also comes at ninety-nine rupees, um, as compared to any competitor in the market at this with the same features. We are a far more affordable, far more valuable razor. I'm going to pass this around. So all of you can kind of, kind of have a look um, and gift it and gift it, use it, uh, etc. This is also the packaging. Now comes Sensi Flow Four. Sensi Flow Four is an evolution over Sensi Smart Three, right? Four blades, mainly four blades. Um, it also comes in a metallic rubber handle, and the center of gravity for people who make razors is the core. It's like a fountain pen. The center of gravity defines the The heft and the usage completely for fountain pens, the flow of ink completely depends upon center of gravity and the and the grip. That's what we've done. So when you when you shave, right, where you hold the razor is where the center of gravity needs to be, which is this, and that's where it's been designed. So the weight balance, etc., is super important. I'm going to pass this around again. As all the features of the Sensi Smart Three also has a back blade for your beard to get shaved. So for example, Vivek, Rohit, myself, Arjun, and Chantanu all have beards which actually require shaping. You are the only clean-shaven person in the room. Oh, but I'm making a sensi smart. Sensi smart. Yes, right? me too. So this is Sensi Flow Four. Sensi Flow Six is, ah, uh, you know, is India's first. Is six. this a decoy product? The Sensi Flow Four. No, it's just, it's actually the real part. Okay. It's the real part. The Sensi Flow Six is 25 grams heavier than the Sensi Flow Four. Again, weight is important. Six blades. Back of the blade is, um, uh, again to get the right. So have to get the right beard shape, but this is more for people who shave every day, have thicker stubbles, 
are more kind of quick shaving before you go to the office or you know you go out for a wedding or you go for a date or a checkup to get a completely clean look i have actually used the sensi flow 6 today on my head so hence i've got what i call the billiard ball look it's a completely gloss finish on my head and i head shaving is a very difficult use case because you can't see yourself you the you know there's a lot of skin and bone so yeah, when there's the flesh shaving right. becomes easier when there's skin and bone shaving that's the real test of a razor right so i've got this done uh with the sensi flow 6 so you know all products are priced compared to the market in fact even better and what i love about our range is all of them come with what what we have designed in house proprietary it's called a razor sharpener okay this is a straw it's mm. something that barbers always use all over india um you we've seen some of the nostra kind of do this with on a on a long leather bed it's to sharpen the blade we've designed this resin uh in a way that after you shave it seven eight times and you feel the razor is getting blunted all you need to do is keep this on your basin and put the razor against it five times and you feel like the shave is as good as new this elongates the life of the blade by almost 30% which basically if you think about it is a very anti capitalist move as a brand we are telling consumers buy later buy you know uh, buy less from us in a way but we believe that if we give great value to you and we are friendly to your pocket and we are friendly to the environment as a brand and conscious about it and it's authentically the best way for us to actually be meaningful participants in the eden gardens slash bombay gym khana slash lords of the category and um, whether it's sensi smart 3 or sensi flow 4 or sensi flow 6 we genuinely believe that we have given we've taken a functional experience and we have given you a pampering experience for those two minutes in the morning when you take a shave we want to take it a step further with our luxury launch this is very similar to a fountain pen inspired by the fountain pen and this is fits on the sensi flow 6 it is almost 50 grams heavier so the experience of a razor that kind of goes by weight will come in the sensi flow 6 luxury version i'm just going to pass it around it also has a name and grade on it arjun this one's for you oh, but no. all of you will get one with Excellent. with your names on it and uh, great for gifting great for using and so on cool. so i'm just going to pass off mm. pass on the product oh. like a fountain pen yeah, it looks, looks like fun yeah. it has that has and stick out sensi flow 6 so The sensi flow four. Yeah, yeah. This is very smart. smart. Go. Oops. I can't drink that water. <laughs> <laughs> shaving mug. Yeah, <laughs> shaving mug. <laughs> shaving mug. The body plastic, plastic color. Yeah. So this is our range. Also, to launch our range, if you have noticed, Bombay Shaving Company has gone through a complete rebrand. Hmm. We now have a bolder, bigger, sharper version of our logo. Hmm. Our logo actually used to be a B to C online friendly logo. Hmm. A thin razor, thin wings, thin font. And you've taken it to bold, big, in the shelf because today we have to compete in the shelf, and we can't do that with a seven-syllable brand, Bombay Shaving Company, seven syllables. So word of mouth is limited, uh, and all brands which are successful in shelves are small, single-syllable, double-syllable, big logo. So it's going to fight the real, you know, battle. Being gladiators on the shelf is important. So new brand, well-designed products, consumer at the core. and hopefully after the last 2 3 minutes uh, all of you will become razor brunners not only to help our razor brunners but also to uh, kind of use these products and let these products be a part of your bathroom range as well great to pitch now we can retake yes now you should now you should kind of totally poke you, holes, you right? put me to sleep after 30 minutes <laughs> right 30 seconds okay, okay. i completely tuned off uh you just kept on talking features you you top everything that's important in this razor to you ha yeah. you didn't really talk about anything that's important to me it's a good right i don't know what i will for what yeah, price for example uh, price like like the main thing around around the price being something which like to reduce value well, to consumers that that may be but then there was so much more that it does yeah. not uh, so come out i found him to be very entertaining yeah. and uh, a very good storyteller just to you know give yeah. a counter point i think you were very engaging where i got a bit lost was that perhaps you were trying too many messages yeah. and at the end of the day people will not remember more than two or three uh, messages and so that's when i was getting a little bit lost in terms of you know um what are what are you trying to communicate i got affordability 
you talked about the metallic rubber handle yeah. but what is that going to sustainable how will that make my life and you know better yeah. and stuff like that so i just got a little bit lost that perhaps you were trying too many messages without the christmas of an elevator but speech yes, yeah. that people were and saying you that. had the experience tostin you know you talk, talked about going out but it was sort of just getting lost in this whole spiel yeah. but i would buy it so it picked my interest enough to say wow Which actually you know i would buy the sensi flow 6 I actually mean, right mm. because the personalization um the uniqueness of that stood out a little bit uh, more and perhaps for you know travel i might buy sensi smart 3 you know mm. put a couple of them in my toiletry yeah, bag also in case you know forget one razor there right? i would buy yeah. this one and which one is that that's because the feel is nice yeah. the heavy one yeah 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 that's the flow 6 mm. it feels it feels right because it's heavy mm. but what are the message if you were to choose one message it's a very important point so Well, I think rain selling is difficult because you're now selling three products, so you okay. always and I am attached to the founder. I am attached to what you have. So you want so to tell everything. Tell everything, it. everything, everything. So I am hoping after ten or fifteen pitches, and tomorrow Arjun and I are going into Karnataka and selling into stores there and so on. Hopefully, it sharpens in the way it happens. Uh, but if you were to pick one message of all of them, which one would it be? Would it be? Sorry, I I actually kind of agree with uh, what Shantanu said was that. You weren't speaking to the consumer. You were talking about the products, right? Like when you yeah. spoke about Sensi Smart, I'm just like, okay, this 70 year old uh, consumer is so fascinating. Yeah. This consumer wants to become a man, yeah. right? Like, okay, first time you're shaving is going to be the first product. I would play on the identity. Another thing I would I would probably want to talk about is that see, you are a young man, you are special. You are which skin special? Your shaving is interesting or special? Special on each side. and that is why it is specifically for you and that is why it is yeah. it's special and what's a cool thing it comes in the price pocket for you buddy yeah. you know what i'm saying like when you're a young person it's not you don't want the you don't want the you don't want the razor for you know slightly bushier or yeah. harder this thing your skin is special right. you're young you're different and that is why it is made for you and i think it's an important that's point so there important. that's so See, important there's almost a certain amount of envy a man feels to a woman in terms of all the cool things they do in terms of their makeup their cosmetics and the beauty treatment this is one of the very few things men can actually do yeah. Correct. from a grooming perspective Correct. so is there a way to actually bring out that joy and pride and that to be able to actually find a way to you know groom yourself in terms of we talked about smoothness mm. you talked about difficult contours so you were looking at pain points to resolve but most races actually end up doing that I probably did what Doet would do with his clipboard in the doctor's office. Right. Right. Yeah. To the scrape, to the point, mm. without actually talking about the impact of the. See, so, Shantanu for me, Shantanu needed to come out because you are the pitch. Very yeah, true. Sure. Right. And there was no Shantanu in this. Right. It could be that you know this is something uh, you created for I don't know your dorm mate for yourself yeah. for whoever. How do you use it? What is I used it, and here is the I wanted to see. Here is the reaction I got from my daughter, from my wife, whatever that may be, right? And I gave this to you since you're not sixteen or seventeen. I gave this to my nephew or son or whatever may be the relevant. But there was no story yes. that mm, personalized yeah. Yeah. it. That empathy and story was missing. And yeah. your yes. story, right? Because you know my eyes are on you, yeah. right? So your story. So how? What does this mean? And to the me? only thing yeah. that. Sort of, you know, your head sharing your head, head yeah. that caught my attention, right. right? So today, look, I, you know, I didn't get any, I, so you know, blah blah, whatever. Uh, so I think you putting you into the story. Excellent. So there yeah. is a, they don't, don't, yeah. don't try and sell the range. So they don't try and raise up. So the range is only for Sensi Smart Three. So I think what yeah. I'm saying is important. But you're right. We should not sell the range. So and it's this in like two, three ways. One, make this your first razor oh. for for these these reasons. Two is. Uh, Like the the consumer is at a very interesting point in their life. So, I'm talking about our identity. We build that. It's big. Jawan, Jawan, Lord, na na. That's it. Just to build. But also, we can afford all of them. You know, don't try to make this about you know three ninety nine, four ninety nine yeah. versus ninety nine. Yeah. But you know, if I could afford all of them, why and where do I use which one? Yeah. And that story could be about why do you use this versus that versus that, right? right. So. And Shantan, your yes. experience does range selling ever work or it is not not in this? It's not not in this case with logic, and I I really like that my idea yeah. because yeah. you've also got to think about uh, what what the person is using today, yeah, right, and you can avoid completely that issue by going for this. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I have made this for you, you. 
And cap and cash of consumer is their first explain of the most important one. Correct. And it because that's your gotta be your entry point. It's gonna be very hard to shift a forty year old uh Gillette user and why do you want to? But the new guy some Satras Alka Banda who shaving Katasamana, there's a visual that comes to the ring. They've always seen older men shave in a particular way. You know, it's always like some really good looking macho man who's shaving, right? So I remember the first time I shave. I just really want to feel like a like an adult man. Like in the room. Mein. Ah, mm-hmm. so the lighting is in front of me. So if I get that feeling, then you can like you you can like you you be you feel like that. Yeah, you right. become so, the per- man you want to be. Man you want yeah. to be. No, no. I have two comments. Like uh, one is I yes, think sir. you have uh, one razor too many. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. Which one? The middle one. Middle one. Yeah. 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 It's like that. Um, you know, the, it's a decoy product. Yeah. That's I said. Right? It's like to shift in yeah. this direction. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, this one, there's another angle. Mm-hmm. Is a lot of this razor is a first time gift from somebody. Mm. It's not bought by sellers. Correct. Mm. Is the dad buying for the son? Mm. The mother arguing with the dad that he's very small. Don't do it. What's the need? Is that something with Devan? Right? Yeah, yeah. I have gone through that. Right? Yes, he's 19 now. But okay. The he meets his girlfriend. He says, "Ki, tum karo yaar. Usko ghar pe tension hai. Ki ghar pe to abhi to mana kar rahe hain. Chota hai. Right? So it's a pretty much a. It's a. It's it's a ritual and an event where this first shave happens in the That's household. True. So also getting the family mm-hmm. into the whole act of saying the first shave. Correct. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And what made yeah. the first shave? It was a friend of the family. Uh, I am just taking a random guess, but. I won't be surprised if 50% of the razors to say 16, 17 years old are gifted. Yeah. And the first like, shave, the first no. razor is a the nice, the first a nice way to play. Right? I thought of that age, no? 18 is an age where you drive a bike or a car oh. for the first time. It's your first drink. It's probably right, your first right. kiss, your first girlfriend. Yeah. First so, time you avoid voting. <laughs> <laughs> first time you're probably living in a, alone in a hostel. It's the first time. No, no, it's the first time you began to become a man. Right. man. Yeah. 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 Right? And uh, because for years, I believe not that didn't ever die. I don't think they ever did in India. But for years in the U.S., Gillette used to send on the 18th birthday to every male child in the U.S. on their birthday a Gillette razor. Really? Wow. Well, yeah. For years, they did that. It is a it's a point of distinction, that yeah. and and you can make wonderful emotional stories on it. There are multiple sure. takes on which you can yeah. make it. This is so good, right? Yeah. So I think this... So I, think so. yeah, I, had, I had some inputs on how you could make it and uh, I think summarizing some of the inputs as well. I think one is that selling is very specific Correct. and I think taking a wide target audience like this and just Correct. generally spewing out the features will not get you anywhere. Correct. So perhaps what I would have done is I may have picked one of us Correct. and started with talking to them okay, and exactly what Rohit said right about his medical detailing thing is that selling is a two-way process a lot of times we think it's a one-way process so we just you know go straight at the audience but it's to understand what do you want yeah Correct. what do you get out of shaving what is missing in your life so gaining out some more insights you should leave your talking to a minimum or when you're selling I think one of the golden rules like one of my first managers taught me is that you have two ears and one mouth use it in that proportion when okay. you're selling so Try and listen more, glean the insights, and then use your mouth in the proportion to your, you know, the three yeah, things, yeah. one third of the one time. Is and, and to do that, you know, you've got to you know, to do what Dunmay said in the sense, you've got to get also more focused on your core target yeah. group. Yeah. What we would call in old term the design target group. Yeah. Right? This doesn't mean that other people no. won't use it or it's not accessible to them, but your entire communication is focused on a core. And I, in, in my own opinion, the best design target group for you to get into is the first time channel. Yeah. yeah, excellent. Yeah. I think the so, one question so, I have here is a lot of the feedback here veers towards a very emotive way of selling. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes in certain categories, the functional piece is also yeah. equally important. So how do we balance? Because you were you were going down a very functional Function, route yeah. of uh, selling. But that's a category code. So you are right, kind of. Catered to that, but there could be a very emotive. So, how do you bring that interesting balance. emotion with Anmay? was saying, even in a functional approach, yeah. how do you make it more interesting and more relatable through stories, as Vani was saying, and more identity, as you know, Tanmay was saying, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as you talk to the person, then you would zero in on only one of the three. 
yeah this is the one and you only want to sell that one to the person and say by the way we for from a range perspective we have something for everyone so we have abcd yeah, yeah, also that, but this is the one that i want to that sell. back shot show range back shot and you always yeah, have yeah. the main one in the beginning and the rest of the back right they always take take a backstage to show that i have something thing, for and, everyone and, and the other thing i like about what that my says is is yes we designed a communication to appeal to a large number of people but the actual attraction is one by one yeah, yeah. Yeah. You get one consumer at a time. Right. Each yeah. individual consumer has to make yeah. that decision. Correct. So this idea of its own skill, yeah, which is now ready to be a man, sort of thing. Correct. You know, so the more it becomes focused into that uh, what? Mm. Can I make half a record? Uh, by the way, you you actually done a it's really interesting. Uh, you done a really good job with. creating content online which a lot of brands aren't able to do which is to create a format that comes naturally to you that is scalable mm. and that you can remain authentic it's like rare that's what actually attracted me to to you for the first time but now that you know the playbook i would extend it further right imagine creating in offshoot of barber shop as a content play where you uh, it's a podcast about uh, manhood mm. right or early early manhood okay. where you discuss all things from uh, really grooming okay. to fashion to amazing idea to dating to whatever yeah. it's the same format you already know the playbook you know how to execute podcasts yeah. you know what what works you used to get just like how shantanu is a character on yours yeah. you just need to find three super relatable characters for this target group and just make them sit week in and week out you get the right titling we get the right clips yeah. you'll automatically be able to double or triple your distribution very quickly because entrepreneurship Tam is slightly smaller than early manhood. Correct. Correct. You know, Tam would Tam is much much larger, and you already know the playbook. This is what I would yeah, I would they, do. Yeah, That's the content point. piece, and then this is the product. This is the piece. product and advertising piece, right? Yeah. Which is slightly yeah. different. That's a great idea. In fact, in the on the content piece, all these themes can start reflecting in in episodes naturally, right? Like I think um, my first and shave hilarious story about my first shaving is a great clip. Yeah. It's like a two hundred thousand thousand yeah. clip. And I'm not saying like you know, know, and I suspect. people of that age are seeking advice on these kind of things and don't have too many places to go and don't talk yeah, to the men don't talk also yeah. correct or... right so you don't get that in the way because you don't got to go ask your best friend yeah that is how they do it on the product section in the bathroom and like one other product like still the shoes or phones or whatever you carry them out so word of mouth even if it's not verbal it's not verbal but i think it's like men don't talk private. men don't talk about this guy you don't no, talk about this men stuff. discuss conquests men don't discuss vulnerabilities yeah right like creating a space for that would be and i can i can assure you nothing like this exists so openly like a great brand is zakir khan okay mm-hmm. zakir talks about men's vulnerabilities that's why just look how viral he is yeah. every time he talks he is remotely vulnerable imagine a podcast with three male characters all of appealing to a different age group for talking about their vulnerabilities or talking about stuff that they actually do to groom themselves stuff that they actually do to navigate life it's this super a, viral it's a huge trigger transition point yeah really starting to Sha- shantanu you know when the then my interest sort of peaked was when you showed that well you know engineered uh, piece uh, fountain pen leave that to my imagination you don't have to but when you said you know this is personalized to urgent we my thought was You know, we're always struggling with what to give somebody. Yeah. So, for a man who has it all, right? Yeah. Because you know, four ninety nine or six ninety nine or how much ever this particular three ninety nine, right? So it's not you can't really be selling price point when you yeah. come to this, right? Yeah. So you know, for a man who has it all, what what, what do you want, yeah. right? And you know, this is just a maybe simple thing. And when you actually Said that you know, I was thinking, oh, maybe I should just order this for Shrini. That's why I just went. But you know, I said, oh, what do I give him? I mean, you know, hardly anything to give. So I mean, so it, there is other ways to just kind of also do this. And if you think about BMW, yeah, okay, it's the right, but it's also that something about the geekiness of the engineering, the engine, the engineering, right? So that also appeals to the alpha, right? This is the alpha, yeah. right, to me, Correct. right? So I mean, how do you then? uh do that personalization is what got apple going you know you can get it into 20 colors who thought we needed a orange <laughs> mac or whatever yeah. and they said yeah you on orange mac you can get a orange mac yes. the other the other thing to play on this kind of if you read that through this customization yeah. yeah right so pick, pick the color you want for your yeah. handle pick 
the mono brand you want. Exactly. Customization is that becoming And for someone who wants the people. best in everything in life, because this is your ultimate product. Yeah. Until you come up with another ultimate product, then it has to be for someone who wants the very best in life of everything. But if you can order from websites, you can order from the first one. If you can order from the first one, like the first one, the Sensi Smart. Sensi Smart, yeah.
right uh, to share but they can mm. this entire experience. that's my mind yeah. space yeah. it's not only the experience yeah. it's also my mind space it's also my gossip space yeah. like is that our job can you give me the whole internal yeah. set of emotional dynamics which you create look uh, i think there is a and this is we are getting into a little bit of brand positioning kind yeah. of uh, yeah. discussion on scene but that's a great just for the sake of it right um uh, if you think of you know, the best a man can get a complete man it is about not very masculine yeah. right? in terms of the approach yeah. of self as a man this is what i yeah. deserve this is what i wear this is what i get the she is what i eat it's very central to me so now on the on the bar for i think that the today morning i landed at 3 am i wanted to get here i wanted to shave in between i tried urban company great service but couldn't manage at 7:30 i wanted in there right It wasn't there. I managed something on my own and came and you helped me there. Right. Uh, it's for me. It's just being if the out there have to be presentable. That's all. Like it's not. It's a respect to where I'm going, but it's not the same for everyone. And hence, if you almost think of completely different path to this, so it is could be just the most efficient way to get to work. Yeah. Right. Is one path. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and work from home has changed this dramatic. Like work from home is a, a world where you're twenty nine year in bed, eight thirty year on the Zoom call. Yeah. Right? It's a very different world. People are not used to that morning ritual anymore. You will be shocked at how many people just hate the morning ritual yeah. after COVID much more than they did. Yeah, yeah. They were because before. they got so, used they, to a better yeah, morning ritual. They got two and a half years of not yeah. doing it. Yeah. Right? And suddenly you have to do it all over again. It's a it's a bloody pain. Yeah. And uh, unlike. people are yes maybe and i don't think everybody enjoys the aspect of that morning ritual or discipline as much as we romanticize that feeling like so that. one could be efficiency rule the other could be a a very different route where you know this is the raise a value by the family yeah there's no sorry say that validated by the family yeah right ye family there is a Yeah, maybe don't play in the same playground as yeah. late, but we'll be fine. Uh, fine, yeah. you know, because functionally, we had this conversation. Oh, what? When did you launch the company? Twenty sixteen. Sixteen. We had the same conversation, right? Uh, it's not like seven years later we are sitting and having the same conversation. Ooh. So uh, just to we we had Mandar's house, yeah. uh, and we are chatting and we are saying, "I'm launching a single razor, and that's going to revolutionize." And we had this very animated conversation about, you know, that's a tough one, yeah. sort of. Uh, but it, it's truly that it's very hard to compete functionally. And and they can see upgrading. No, eight blades will come, seven will come. Now what? Six and a half. People just they started like the yeah. number yeah. of blades. Yeah. So Reza Pranos, thank you so much for all the all the feedback. I think super important to understand how the sales pitch can actually be and how you can actually sell and be in the mind of the consumer. So I'm now going to try and get all the feedback, whether it is about what the consumer wants, being emotive, positioning of the brand, etc. And then I given that before I did yeah. shave you with the Sensi Smart Three, yeah. but now it's a do-it-yourself product. So yeah. next time you need to do it yourself. I am going to sharpen the sales pitch for you yeah. um, as a Sensi Smart Three, and yeah. let's see whether I have end of got it. My name is Shantanu Deshpande, and I'm the founder of Bombay Shaving Company. Wow. This is Sensi Smart Three, a razor which I used on my head this morning, and the head is actually a very sensitive place to shave because there is no flesh on it. It's only skin and bone, but I have got zero cuts. Then yeah. my, you're a seventeen-year-old boy. Yeah. Right? You are going to drive a car for the first time next year. Yeah. You're going to be able to drink yeah. with your father yeah. on your first date. Yeah. You're only going to kiss a girl for the first time. Yeah. You have. I hope so. You are, your skin is important. Yeah. You also, you don't want to follow the herd. You yeah. want to use brands that you identify with, which are different, but you know you relate to. Bombay Shaving Company is a younger, bigger, older brand, and this is Sensi Smart Three from our stable. It's far more sensitive on your skin. It takes care of all, of all the sparse hair that you might have. It gives you smooth, glowing finish. You feel that this is not something just say satta sat shave karke nikalna. Mm. This is something just say aap ek minute khud ko do, mm. and then you feel much better. You look good. You feel good. You become the best version of yourself, ready for the world, and become the man that you always dreamed of. जवान लड़की भी जवान लड़की बोर्डो के लिए नहीं है आल्सो तेरे को क्लाइमेट के बारे में यू यू फील अ लॉट डीपर देन ऑन देन द ओल्डर जनरेशंस दिस इज अ रेजर शार्पनिंग दैट कम विद दिस रेजर इस पे तुम सात आठ शेव्स के बाद जस्ट 
rub the razor upwards and you can elongate the life of the razor giving you a lot more value better for your profit better for the planet you sell this for 99 rupees ah kya baat hai 99 rupees ka razor bhi hai and 49 rupees ka cartridge oh wow so your per shave cost if you shave with with fun razor for even 15 times the per shave cost is under 3 or maybe 3 to 3.5 rupees so great experience great for your skin and great way to get into the world of shaving to become the man you always aspire to be will you be a sensitive smart three user from the budget parts dena one dozen is that a better one dozen was that a better yes, good, much, yeah. better. much better 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 Yeah. And then put doctor yeah. thing that the product designed, designed for you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah. Especially may especially yeah. designed for people. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, people watching us are going to buy this product in bulk by tens, hundreds, possibly even thousands, because they want to go and sell it and be razor planner of the year, razor planner of India. Final words of advice from each of you. We can actually go around the table on not only just se- selling Sensi Smart Three. But how to become an entrepreneur by mastering the art of sales? Final, final words. We actually go around the table. Thank you for your side. Selling can be fun. Enjoy it. Thank you. I think uh, selling is a two-way process. So make sure that you understand the consumer first and get feedback from time to time as you are in the process itself, so that you can meet the consumer's needs better. Your energy can be infectious. So whatever you do. show your passion and conviction and don't worry about rejection keep going tomorrow you will sell more don't worry about rejection is such an important thing yes i think uh, no matter what you want to do in life whether you want to be a founder an engineer or a product manager i think having the ability to sell is useful in everything so do it just just to learn uh, just to learn something new and if you sell to enough number of people you will guarantee learn something new सेलिंग में मजा है मतलब एक बार किसी को बेच के कुछ पैसा कमाना वो जब पैसा हाथ में आता है या चेक करती है तो उसका जो मजा है वो लाइफ में पहली बार तो बहुत मजा आता है और हमेशा मजा आता है जब भी होता है और उसमें ये भी है कि बहुत बार फेलियर होता है पर उससे जो आदमी को सीखने को मिलता है ना मेरे को नहीं मिलता किसी और चीज से मिलता है सेलिंग तो सबको आनी चाहिए चाहे वो इंजीनियर हो चाहे सेल्स पर्सन हो चाहे सीईओ हो चाहे कोई भी हो सेलिंग सब कौन चाहिए मेरे वे क्यों फोकस ऑन हाई परफॉर्मिंग रिलेशनशिप्स आई थिंक एट द एंड ऑफ द डे इफ यू कैन क्रिएट विन विंस दैट्स व्हेन ट्रू मैजिक हैपेंस अमेजिंग एस टुडे हैव बीन सच अ प्लेजर थैंक यू सो मच फॉर बीइंग एन अमेजिंग ऑडियंस फॉर बीइंग गाइड्स रेजर बर्नर्स रेजर गुरुज एज वी कॉल देम इंटरनली अर्जुन एज अ बोर्ड मेंबर यू हैव काइंड ऑफ हेल्प्ड अस डिजाइन दिस फॉर फॉर मोर देन अ ईयर नाउ have us with uh, you know a lot of the things that have come on this table are because of arjun's kind of focus guidance with the team uh, and myself uh, but thank you so much for being candid authentic you know genuine and uh, i really hope that all the razor runners will actually look at today's episode and actually go out and learn something i think razor and all is fine but learn something about it um, sales that and that all the best better. guys thank yeah, you so much thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. but yeah